Well, it's a good afternoon to you football fans who welcome you inside the broadcast booth at Trailblazers Stadium as Dixie State gets set to host Shadron State on a homecoming. The Trailblazers, after one game on the road, back for another two-game home stand. Again, I'm Carrick Segmiller, and bringing my broadcast partner, Drayson Ball, as we kick this thing off inside the TDS pregame show. Dixie State coming in 6-1 and one overall, 5-1 and one in the RMAC. Shadron State 3-4, and 2-4 and four in the RMAC, but Drayson, don't let that record fool you. They've won their last two games, and they've scored over 40 points in their last two games. We'll have a very good matchup on our hands this week. As we welcome you into the broadcast booth, Carrick Segment on Drayson Ball. Yeah, you're talking about uh, this uh, Shadow State College team. Really a good offense is really what comes to mind. Um, they, they did struggle early on against a few teams as they were kind of getting into the season, but last two games, like you mentioned, two victories, scoring over 40 points in each of those games. They are a very, very good offensive team. The struggles have been for them defensively. They're averaging over 32 points allowed defensively per game. We'll get into those numbers in a little bit, but that's kind of the tell of the tape. That's kind of the, the uh, the skinny, the numbers on yes. uh, on uh, Shadow State College coming into this game. And we'll look at those head-to-head -head stats here in just a moment. But let's set this thing up for you. We gave you the, the, the records. It's a balmy 63, I think it's a little warmer than that, probably 65 degrees right now. Uh, by kickoff, it's supposed to be around 70, and we'll be pushing 75 degrees today a as a high. It is beautiful outside as the Trailblazers get set to host the Eagles of Shadron State College. Uh, very light breeze, if any. It's perfect weather for football in October. This is why we live in St. George, Drayson, is to have these beautiful fall days that uh, you know everywhere else is gearing up for snow. I was talking to Dave Collins, the Shadron State radio guy. He's here to, to call the game for, for those fans back home in Nebraska. But he said, yeah, well, the trip out was fine, but we're gearing up to run into about 8 to 12 inches of snow across Wyoming on the way home tonight. So hopefully they can make it home safe. That's why we live in St. George. We love the beautiful weather here. This is the TDS pregame show. We're going to name some quality and keys to the game as we get going throughout the pregame show. And we'll have some Cafe Sabor starting lineups for you as well just before we get this thing underway and kicked off. Uh, let's look at the series history. It's always good to go back and look at what these two teams have done against one another. Uh, the Trailblazers and, and the Eagles have met up three times prior to today. Drayson, this will be the fourth all-time matchup between Dixie State and Shadron State. The Trailblazers opened the series back in 2016 in a, in a score that I think surprised a lot of people as the Trailblazers went to Shadron, Nebraska in 2016 and won 44-27. And then uh, the Eagles came back in 2017. It was a 24-24 game going into the fourth quarter. And, and uh, Dixie State scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter in that game to win 38-24. And then last year, the Trailblazers had five trips into the red zone and came empty on all five of those trips including with under three minutes to go first and goal from your own five down five a chance to win the game you couldn't do it turn the ball over on down so you thought maybe we can force a punt and still try to score the trailblazers gave up a 97 yard touchdown run on first down after the turnover on downs and would eventually fall 30 to so it's a series that very well could be a 3 nothing lead for the Trailblazers, but it is a 2-1 to one series lead uh, for the Trailblazers. And Drayson, a team that Dixie State has really been able to match up pretty well with. And you talk about like a team last week against Western Colorado for one reason or the other. The Mountaineers always play Dixie State really tough, and so does Shadron State. But it's a team in Shadron State that the Trailblazers have historically matched up a little better with than, say, Western State last week. Yeah, and on paper, you'd think the same thing coming into today's matchup. The Trailblazers, obviously, uh, just setting all kinds of records week in and week out. Six consecutive victories. Six and one is the best start to a season in the, in the D2 era. Um, and they have a chance to set another record today, again, extending their win streak to seven games plus uh, recording the the the, to the matching the the total wins for a season in the division 2 era at the earliest possible stage uh, this week. And so, like I said, on paper, you'd think, yeah, the Trailblazers are going to have a, a significant advantage over this one against a 3-4 team coming in uh, to today's game. But like I mentioned, they always come in and play tough in this Shadron State College team. I expect the same thing today, come in and fight and try to spoil the Trailblazers' homecoming. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Drayson, you, you started to allude to some of those numbers, but let's look at the head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams. And for you TV and Internet viewers, you can see the graphic on your screen and follow along there as we look at the tail of the tape, uh, some of the main statistical categories. Uh, it's very close, and, and you know we're used to the last few weeks the, the teams at Dixie State have been playing. The Trailblazers on paper have, have 
been above their opponents in most of these categories. Not this week. Dixie State a slight edge in scoring at 35.4 points per game over 35.1 points per game for Shadron State. Uh, this Shadron State squad, Drayson, is actually by uh, 0.8 of a yard the, uh, the leading total offense in this Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference at 470.9 yards per game. The Trailblazers at 440 uh, at 447.1 yards per game. Um, as we continue on, if, if you were hearing a loud whine, I, we'll just address this right now. Uh, if you were hearing a loud, like, screeching, whining sound, uh, that we heard it too, uh, if it was audible on the broadcast. Uh, it should be gone now. They were blowing up the uh, the tunnel that the Trailblazers will run through to go out on to the field. And for one reason or the other, from that pump, we were getting a loud whiny sound. So as we continue on with the tail of the tape, I'm glad that sound's gone because it was distracting me too a little bit. If you were watching our live stream here on Dixie State Athletics Facebook, um, you could see me, hear me take, you saw me take the headset off and it was kind of distracting me. So it's gone. Let's continue on in our tail of the tape. Uh, Dixie State is trailing in the total offense uh, output uh, to Shadron State, 470 to 447 yards per game. Uh, Shadron State is, is better in the rushing department, 172 yards to 150 yards for the Trailblazers. Passing a slight edge, 298 to 297. Dixie State is a little bit better on fourth down or third down, Drayson, but the turnover margin uh, is pretty even. So on paper, this matchup looks very, very uh, close and, and similar between these two teams. Yeah, you, you talk about two very, very good offenses between Shadron and Dixie State, and that's really going to be key for the for the Trailblazers today is if they can stop this Shadron State offense. We obviously know the Trailblazers have had an excellent defense all season long, and Shadron State have been burned defensively, like I mentioned. They're giving up 32 points per game, uh, nearly 300 yards of total offense. And, uh, you know, that's really kind of been where they've struggled so far in the season that they've lost a couple of their games due to the lack of defense uh, that they've been able to show through the first seven games of this season. The Trailblazers offense should be poised to be able to burn that defense from time to time. And if they can, they can do that, and plus their defense can stop the Chattanooga State's offense, they should be set up in a good situation for them to try to get this victory here on homecoming. It is a TDS pregame show. Uh, we've broken down the tail of the tape. Let's look at Shadron State a, a little bit closer, Drayson, as we've looked at some of those team numbers. We can talk about some of those players now uh, for Shadron State. It, it, if you want to recap Shadron State's season, uh, like we mentioned, they're three and four overall, uh, two and four in the RMAC. Started off with a 48-31 win at uh, Black Hill State before falling 42 to 21 to CSU Pueblo. And then a couple of frustrating matchups for the Eagles as we talked to uh, their radio guy, Dave Collins, earlier in the day today. A 37-30 loss at Fort Lewis, a game they felt like they probably should have won. A 42-30 loss against Colorado Mesa. A tough loss at Western Colorado where they gave up a blocked punt for a touchdown, interception for a touchdown, all sorts of quirky stuff. A 33-32 loss to Western Colorado. But then in the last two weeks, 42-23 over Adams State and then 43-21 win uh, over Texas Permian Basin at home in a non-conference game last week against a Lone Star Conference team, a very tough conference to play against, and this uh, Shadron State team is on the up and up. Uh, offensively, you've got the conference's leading passer on your side, and then two of the top receivers as well, Jason. Why don't you tell us about that passing game of Shadron State? Yeah, it all starts with Dalton Holtz, the quarterback for uh, Shadron State. Uh, you know, 156 of 280 for 286. That's a 55% completion percentage. 20 touchdowns on the season compared to six interceptions. He's already thrown for over 2,000 yards so far this season. And then they've got, like, like you mentioned, a couple good receivers. Uh, Cole Thurnus and Tavon Wright. Third and fourth in the RMAC receiving, respectively. Cole Thurnus, 45 receptions, 583 yards, five touchdowns, averaging about 83 yards per game. And then Tavon Wright, of course, 39 receptions, 558 yards. He's got nine touchdowns on the season and 79 yards per game uh, receiving for the Eagle. Like I mentioned, it all starts with Dalton Holst. You're getting uh, to see a little bit of these uh, receivers. And, of course, Dalton Holst is the quarterback throwing it to these receivers. There's Tavon Wright going over the middle. They've just got a lot of weapons, a lot of different ways that they can get this offense rolling. We obviously mentioned the wide receivers. They also got another one, Brandon Fullerton, who's eighth right now in RMAC receiving. 22 receptions, 384 yards, and three touchdowns on the season. They kind of got a good three-headed monster there in the wide receiver department. They've also got a couple good running backs, Elijah Miles, third in the RMAC in rushing right now. Uh, 86 attempts, 
477 yards, six touchdowns for Elijah Miles, and then Stephon Brown as well, 79 attempts, 409 yards, two touchdowns. He's averaging about 58 yards per game for the Eagles. They've got a really good offense, like you mentioned. The RMAX leading pass are already at over 2,000 yards for the season through just seven games of this year. Let's talk about Dixie State. The Trailblazers coming into this game 6-1 and one overall, 5-1 and one in the RMAC, and, and a team that uh, has been kind of back and forth, Trace. And you talk about a team that early on well, uh, you needed to uh, come back and win games, and you had a stretch of games where you had a huge first half and first quarter. And last week at Western Colorado, it was back to the being the comeback kids, trailing 14-7 at halftime, and then scoring 21 points in the third quarter and hanging out on the fourth for the win. It's been a team that uh, offensively, defensively, uh, both sides of the ball really getting it done for Dixie State, and that's been really the key to this record start, 6-1 and one overall, both sides contributing, not just the offense or not just the defense. Yeah, and it wasn't the prettiest win last week in Western Colorado, and I think even uh, Coach Peterson, we talked to him on our Trailblazers Weekly Show a few days ago uh, in an interview, and he said, you know, in that third quarter, they really got out to a good a good offense, and they were playing very, very well, but then I think they went a little conservative in that fourth quarter, but did eventually get that win. Like I said, it wasn't pretty, but the offense did their job in the third quarter, and then the defense held up its end of the bargain in the fourth quarter. Western Colorado was in Dixie State territory nearly all of the fourth quarter. The defense forced a couple of uh, interceptions. They also forced a couple of turnovers on downs. They just were very, very solid late in that game, which was key for them to pull out that victory. And then, like you mentioned, coming into the day, you got to have both of those. You cannot, can't have your offense scoring 50 points if your defense is not playing well either. Similarly, you can't have your defense playing very, very well and have your offense struggling because this is an offense for Shadow State that can put up a lot of points. So if your defense is not doing its job, your offense has to be productive. Yeah, it has all the, the, the makings and perhaps the recipe, you could say, of, a, of a, an RMAC shootout. You know, Dixie State beat Colorado School of Mines 52-45 last year on this field. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if everyone wants to see the shootout. It'll be interesting to see what this defense for Dixie State does, Drayson, as this is one of the better offenses the Trailblazers have seen since facing CSU Pueblo here in week one. So the Trailblazers only giving up 18.4 points per game uh, so far this season. But I think that defense will be put to the test today against this tough offense. Yeah, and, and, and you know, they like I said, they've just got a lot of weapons, a lot of different things. They've got a lot of good schemes. They can run the ball. They can pass the ball. They can do just a lot of different things that keep you on your toes and maybe keep you off balance. The Trailblazers are going to have to be good on the defensive line. They're going to have to get to the quarterback, get to get to holes. If they can do that, I think, and, and force him out of the pocket, he is a very good quarterback in the sense that he can recognize the pressure coming around him. He can step up into the pocket to evade pressure. He can scramble to his left or to his right. Now, he does lose a little bit of accuracy when he does that, much like a lot of quarterbacks, but he is very good at reading pressure, stepping up into the pocket, and finding receivers down the field. Trailblazers and Eagles getting set to do battle inside Trailblazers Stadium. Dixie State 6-1 and one overall, 5-1 and one in the RMAC. Shadron State 3-4 and four overall and 2-4 and four in the RMAC. Again, don't let the record discrepancy fool you. We have got an absolute great game on our hands here in St. George, Utah. We're going to step away. Let's, take, uh, let's make it a two-minute timeout, and we will come back with some of our keys to the game brought to you by Quality Inn. And then we'll get going with our Cafe Sabor starting lineups. This is the TDS pregame show, two-minute timeout, and back on your Trailblazer Football Network. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. 
One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth at Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State and Shadron State getting set to do battle. Just about eight minutes from the kickoff. Our national anthem will happen here in just a little bit. But let's take a look around the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. I don't think we'll get to the keys of the game before uh, before this. We have to take another break for the anthem. But uh, let's take a look at the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference right now and, and see what games are on the slate. Of course, you've got this game here today. But uh, five other games on the docket today. Fort Lewis is going to be at Western Colorado. That should be an interesting matchup in Gunnison at 1 p.m. New Mexico Highlands is at South Dakota Mines, and Highlands actually got their first win uh, last week. So that's a Highlands team that, that could go, and they could beat the Hard Rockers in South Dakota as well. Black Hills State is at Colorado Mesa. That's going to be anybody's game so far this year. Adam State at CSU Pueblo, and then in a non-conference action, undefeated Colorado School of Mines will travel to Azusa, uh, California, to take on Azusa Pacific. Uh, the Cougars of Azusa Pacific not having as good of a year as they've be, uh, become accustomed to, but that is a, that's a big non-conference game for Colorado School of Mines. They want to stay undefeated. They want to keep moving up in the top 25. And speaking of the top 25, Dixie State, 37 votes in the top 25 last year, uh, last week. Uh, as we said on Trailblazer Weekly, the Trailblazers, if you went that far, are the number 27 team in the country right now, just two teams out of the top 25. Yeah, and, and they've uh, earned every single vote that they've received. They've been playing very, very well over the six-game uh, winning streak. And coming in, you know, obviously if you get a win here, you, you continue to win, you continue to get more votes, and maybe even see if you can crack into that top 25. Let's take another two-minute timeout for the National Anthem. When we come back, we'll give you our quality and keys to the game and our Cafe Savor starting lineups. We're inching closer to kickoff. Two-minute timeout and back with more of the TDS pregame show. I got you right where I want you. I make this one. It's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience, mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Hi, I'm Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in, because for 75 years, Smokey only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. Meanwhile, the song was wrong. We did start the fire. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. There is a place where the sun doesn't hide in the winter, where the greens stay green and the crimson canyons still glow. There is a place where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where we drive for show, putt for dough, and settle the score with another round. There is a place. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth. Carrick Sagman, the Drayson Ball with you as the Trailblazers get set to host Shadron State College. The Eagles come in with a 3-4 and four overall record, 2-4 and four in the RMAC. The long trip 
from Shadron, Nebraska. You got those three schools, Shadron, Nebraska, and Shadron State, South Dakota Mines, and Black Hill State. Jason, they're all about within two hours of one another, and it's a long trip there, and it's a long trip out to here as well. And we have a great game on our hands. Let's tell you a little bit more about that game. We'll give you our quality in keys to the game as the team captains walk out for the coin toss to see who will have this football first. But it's time for our quality in keys to the game, and you can follow along on your screen as well. Three keys we will give you uh, as we get set for this football game. Drayson, you and I talked about this uh, a little earlier in the week and, and before we came on the air today. Our key says running rampant. Uh, you think that eventually Dixie State has got to get some sort of a potent running attack going to beat some of these better teams. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got three good running backs in Seiji Luongo, Darman Atoa, and Andrew Canelli Robles, but none of them have really had that breakout game this season that you've been expecting from them. You know, I'd love to see one of them see if they can break out for 100 yards this season. Not sure if we've had a 100-yard rusher all season long. That's going to be one of the big keys against this defense that struggled at times. you got to be able to have a good, de a good rushing attack, and hopefully the Trailblazers can do that today. Shadron State won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Dixie State will receive uh, two more keys. If we can go back to those uh, on the screen. Uh, dynamite deep ball, Drayson. The Trailblazers are going to have some opportunity to throw the ball deep just like they have throughout the game yeah, this the season. The Shadron State defense, they run a straight man-to-man -man defense. It, it, it is man-to-man -man all the way through. They have one high safety. That's it. They bring five every, virtually every time, unless they maybe bring a blitz, they bring an extra guy. But they're going to bring five at least every single time. We're going to have one deep safety over the middle. If you can run two deep routes on the sidelines, you're going to have one of those open. The safety's going to have to pick one or the other. If you can beat your man one-on-one, -on -one, you should be able to get some open passes downfield. If the Trailblazer can exploit that and get some big plays, they're going to have a lot of success today. Final quality in key to the game today, Drayson, Dixie State has got to keep it within the whistle. Tell us what we mean when we say within the whistle. Yeah, the Trailblazers have had a, a lot of struggles this season with after the whistle penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, personal fouls, those types of extracurricular activities that it's really cost them last week, had 16 penalties in that win over Western Colorado, and it was one of those things that if you, you know if you get a couple more of those, you might not leave uh, Gunnison with a victory. They gotta keep it into the, in between the whistle. Be disciplined. Don't participate in those extracurricular activities, and don't get unnecessary penalties if you can avoid them. Play within the whistle and do your business. Then, those are your quality and keys to the game. Uh, and this has been your TDS pregame show. We wrap that up now. We'll keep it right here as we get set for kickoff. Let's give you Dixie State's offensive starters and our Cafe Sabor starting lineups as they will start with the football. So let's give you Dixie State's offensive starters. We'll give you their defensive starters after the first change of possession. Uh, Drayson, why don't you tell us who we got there? Yeah. Some nice looking graphics on we the, got there. On by the, the way. offensive line. Uh, from left to right, Adib Jowney, Joshua Partita, Nathan Aceves, the man in the middle, Kyle Whiteside's right guard, and Taylor Alvarez at right tackle. Of course, your quarterback is Cody Wilson. He'll be backed by C.J. Luongo. Your tight end is Chase Hess and flanked by Casey Allison. Xavier Smith and Dewan Dantzler are your wide receivers. Again, we'll give you the defensive starters when the Trailblazers move to the, the defensive side of the football. Those are your offensive starters uh, presented by Cafe Sabor. And let's play football. The Trailblazers and the Eagles set to do battle. It's Colton Dolder getting set to put this thing into play for the Eagles. And back deep to receive is Xavier Smith and Darman Atoa for the Trailblazers. It'll be Xavier Smith on the far side, Darman Atoa on the near side. The Trailblazers moving left to right across your radio dial as we see it. It bounces off a Dixie State player. He picks it back up, and it'll be tackled promptly at the 30, maybe the 31-yard line. I think that was Connor McKay that had it bounce off of his leg. He'll pick it up, and the Trailblazers will start at their own 30. Yeah, going to have decent field position for this first drive to start the game, the 30-yard line, see if they can get their offense going early and put some points on the board on this first possession. Got some confetti released from the, the Stampede student section. That goes up into the air. Last week at Western Colorado, I, I thought that kept happening, but it was leaves blowing off of the trees. Every once in a while, you'd see these leaves just blowing everywhere. And here we go. Let's play football. Dixie State, Shadron State. 14.56 on your first quarter clock. And here is Cody Wilson and the Trailblazer offense. Three receivers set. C.J. Luongo in the backfield. Delayed handoff to C.J. Shifts past one defender, and he's got room 40, 45, 50. He's going to go. First play of the football game, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Trailblazers. 
no flags. Dixie State, 6 nothing with a PAT pending. And what did we say? The keys to the game was get that offense going early, and specifically the rusher, CJ Luongo, does a great job here of avoiding the first tackler. He fakes out that left defensive end and then gets into the secondary. And, of course, like I mentioned, there's only that one high safety. There's one man to beat. If you can get behind him, you can have some big plays. CJ Luongo with a 70-yard run. Holy Toledo. That is how you start a football game. 70 yards to the house for C.J. Luongo, and here's James Baird on for the PAT. The snap, the hold, the kick is good, and 16 seconds into this football game, Dixie State leads at 7-0 on your Camping World scoreboard. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe. Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps! Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Officially a 69-yard touchdown run for C.J. Luongo. We talked about running rampant, and certainly that play will help you out. And here we go, back in play. James Baird will send it. It's Cole Thurness fielding it at the five-yard line near side. And the Eagles are going to run a reverse. Flag flies, and here comes the returner at the 30, 35, and he gets out of bounds just across the 35, 36-yard line. Flag in the backfield. You think this is for either a block in the back or a hold? Probably coming back, Tracy. Yeah, Thur Thurness got it on the uh, near side of uh, about the 10-yard line, the five-yard line or so. Hands it off to Ethan Frey on the reverse. We're going to get a flag. Here's the call. Personal foul. Illegal wedge. 33 and 84 of the return team. After this is the goal, first down shattered. So illegal wedge is the call. Half the distance back to the goal, and the Eagles, they bust out the trick play after giving up a 69-yard touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage. And they are backed up inside the 10, back to the 7-yard line. And that is where the Eagles will start out. Dalton Holst. The junior quarterback from Gillette, Wyoming, the Armac leading passer, will bring this team out onto the field. And in the backfield, it looks like it's going to be is that Elijah Miles back there with him. Miles will take the first carry around the right end. And he gets across the 10 to the 12-yard line to pick up a five for Miles on first down. And this is what the Shadron offense does. They like to run their running backs in between the tackles. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of uh, times when they run outside of the tackle box. You see here, Elijah Miles gets this one from the pistol formation, and he just runs right in between the tackles, bounces out there late uh, after he sees that hole close open up. Samote Loco too, he grabs him and brings him down after a pickup of five. Second down and five, ball at the Shadron State 12. 14.04 to go on your Camping World scoreboard. 7-0 Dixie State. Play action, that give it Thurness. He makes the catch and he is upended immediately by Aaron Simpson. They like to run that play. They'll swing it to either side of Thurness. Aaron Simpson read that play like a book. Yeah, their passes go mainly to the sidelines and in between the hashes. This one, they get it out to the far sideline. Holst has a strong arm. He's able to get it out there quickly, but Thurness just not just have any room to run and a good play there by the Dixie State defense to limit him for no game. Or maybe even a loss a couple. Catch number 46 on the season for Thurness. And it's a third down and eight so far this season on third down. Shadron State 39% conversion rate. And Dixie State force a three and out and get off the field. Third down and eight, play clock at two, snap to Holst. Pressure comes, forces him out to the right. He's going to have to try to run for it, and he's going to be tackled just across the first down marker. Good coverage downfield, but Holst found a seam, needed eight for the first down. He picks up 10 
to move the chains. And this is like I mentioned in the pregame show, Dalton, Dalton Hulse can do this. He can scramble and he can get out of the pocket. He knows where the pressure is coming from. He moves to his left, sees that there's no one open downfield and he can tuck it and run. He does just that. This is something he can do. He's very capable of doing this as well as a good passer. They'll pitch it to Thurness on a first down. He tries to turn the corner and he does so. 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 35. A flag dropped at the 23 yard line. This could be a face mask against Dixie State. Yeah, it's going to be a face mask. You see the Dixie State defender grab Thurness by the face, and I think it's going to be the 15 yard variety, if I'm not mistaken. He's, if I saw it correctly, he kind of grabbed and tugged on it a little bit, so we'll see what this call is, but looking like it's going to be a face mask against the Trailblazers. Yeah, jet sweep to Thurness from right to left. And he's, he's involved on a ton of plays. Now it's holding. I've, I've never been so happy to have you be wrong I've, in my life. I was going to say the exact same thing. I've never been so happy to be wrong. And we'll see here the little pass, a little shovel pass to Thurness here. And I thought maybe Malaki Malaki grabbed him there at the face pass, but no, he just had him there kind of in the lower neck area, high shoulder pad area, and the hold will back up the Eagles here first they, and about they, 16. They called that penalty on 21, which is Lane Jersile, the defensive back. I wonder if perhaps it was one, maybe Elijah Miles, the running back, sneaking out there in front. Either way, first down and 17 for the Eagles. A pair of penalties hurting Shadron State so far. What would have been a good re kickoff return and then a good play there for Thurness as well. First down and 17 for the Eagles. Their own 13-yard line. Holst looking downfield. Has a man catch made. Tavon Wright. Or no. Will it be a catch? Yes, it will. Dixie State coaches trying to argue that it was incomplete. But they're going to say it was a catch out to the 40-yard line. And a first down for Shadron State. Yeah, Tavon Wright working on Devin Chandler here. A great back shoulder throw there by Holes, and you see he just finds him there on the sideline. A very, very good play. Like I mentioned, these passes, they like to go to the sidelines and in between the hashes. They don't really use the area between the hashes and the sidelines. They like to throw outside the numbers and between the hashes. 12.05 to go. Pistol formation for Shadron State on first down. Flag flies, and we should have a false start if they're going to start it like that, or stop the play like that. It will be a false start against Shadron State. Full start, full start. Number 77, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Tell you, head coach Jay Long has got to be frustrated with his Shadron State team so far. The way they've been, been with the kickoff return and, and moving the football, they should be in probably Dixie State territory by now with three big penalties. And it's first down and 15 for the Eagles. Yeah, and this is like we talked about, you know, it's been it's been a killer for the Trailblazers all season long. The penalties, Chadron State racking them up here on this first possession already. And a flag flies before they can get set again, before they can get the play off. Another false start, Drayson. Yeah, and I'm not sure if I saw any movement up front, but it might be a procedural penalty. Right to the snap, false start, number 61, offense, five yards, still first down. First down and 20. Four penalties already against Shadron State in this game. And when you're on the on the road and a long trip, I know it's early, but those can be backbreakers. Yeah, I didn't see anything there on the replay, uh, at least on the offensive line. Maybe it was one of the receivers or one of the, the one of the backs. First down at 20. The Shadron State 28. Snap to Holst. Low snap. Brings it down. Swings it to right. Makes the catch at the 35-yard line and he'll pick up nine yards of the 10 penalty yards. And it'll be first down and 12 for the, second down and 12 for the Eagles. Tevin Wright is the fourth uh, leading uh, receiver in the RMAC right now. That's his 41st catch on the season. Well over 550 yards, nine touchdowns. He's one of their favorite, he's one of Holt's favorite receivers, especially when they get near the end zone and over 40 receptions on the season. Yeah, Cole Thurness and Tavon Wright, two favorite targets for Dalton Holst. Holst will drop it inside. Thurness makes the catch one-on-one -on -one with Alex Lilliard. And Lilliard and Malaki Malaki will drag him down out of bounds. He'll pick up probably four yards on the play. It'll be third down and eight upcoming for Shadron State. Yeah, Thurness is a really fast receiver. He just comes a little drag route over the middle, but not a lot of rushing running room there as Alex Lilliard and Malaki Malaki tag team to bring him out of bounds. It'll force a third and nine for Shadron State. Yeah, let's say third and nine officially. Shadron State has converted. It's one third down on this drive. 39% third 
third down conversion rate coming into this game. 10.30 to go on your Camping World scoreboard. First quarter, 7-0 Dixie State. Shotgun snap to Holst. Empty backfield. Has time, throws downfield. Thurness one-on-one with Alex Lilliard incomplete, and the flag will fly, and I think that's probably the right call. Lilliard did get the hands up on him before the football was there. Thurness nearly made the catch, even with the flag. Yeah, Alex Lilliard just doing a little bit of hand fighting. I mean, I think he might have grabbed him there with the left hand just as the pass was coming. It was pretty good coverage overall. Lilliard did get his head turned back around and thought it might have got a hand on that one, but uh, we'll get the call from the referee. Pass interference, number five, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, our, our head referee, Brett Ford, is he's getting a workout. Been busy so far. He's, that's, uh, what is that, number six so far in this game between both teams? As we check, take a look at the replay, Holst very patient, finds his guy. I don't know. It didn't look like a lot there. Not from that angle. Not from that angle. There could have been something from the other side, and maybe a hit in the, in the in the ribs or. Either way, first down and ten for Shadron State. Now finally into Dixie State territory at the 46-yard line. Snap to Holst, looking slant route inside. Uh oh, Tavon right wide open, and he. Couldn't quite haul it in. That would have gone for a touchdown incomplete. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Tavon Wright may have gotten away with a push off here against Devin Chandler. Chandler fell at about the 30, maybe the 25 yard line. They ran kind of a crossing route, almost like a pick play. You see as Holtz is looking to his left and Tavon Wright, you can't see from that angle, but may have gotten away with a push off as they ran kind of a pick play. That's why he was left so wide open. Second down and 10 for Shadron State. Ball at the Dixie State 46 yard line. It's turning into a pretty lengthy drive for Shadron State. 10-13 to go in the first. On second down, a run right up the middle. And Elijah Miles will surge forward across the 40, down to the 38-yard line, a pickup of eight, third down and two upcoming for the Eagles. Yeah, this one, like I said, just runs right up the middle. Elijah Miles lowers his head and gets a few extra yards. The Eagles will run back up to the line. They get set now. They look to the sideline. Third down and two. Two for two on third down is Shadron State. Back to Miles. He trying to bounce it outside off a defender, and he's going to be stopped short of the marker. Because it's going to depend on that spot. Needed to gain the 36-yard line. They're right there near the 36. It's going to maybe be Just a short. half yard short is all. Forking up a fourth and inches. But Dixie, Dixie, State, Dixie territory. State had him in the backfield. He stopped him at the line. He tried to bounce it outside. And then he was able to surge forward still. And it looked like a pretty generous spot. And Shadron State going to go for it on fourth down with 9.08 to go, kind of in that no man's land. Pistol formation with Holst in the shotgun. And Elijah Miles standing behind him. Two receivers split out to the left. The snap, the give to Miles, and he's got it. And this is just smash mouth football right up the middle with Elijah Miles as he uh, just gets the carry, goes right up the middle, right up the gut. You see here just lowers his head, runs downhill, gets across the 35-yard line to about the 34, 33-yard line. They'll give him enough for the first down. You get a, a, a running back like Elijah Miles ahead of steam, and it's going to be hard to keep him from picking up a half yard, and he picked up three on that play. First down and 10 for the Eagles at the Dixie State 33-yard line. Holst back to Miles, and he's free. First down yardage across the 20, and he'll pick up 13 yards on a first down, and the chains move again into the true by Hilton red zone. Yeah, it looked like he might have gotten tripped up right near the line of scrimmage, but does a good job of staying on his feet. You see there, just kind of running with his momentum already over his body, you know, that far forward, but keeps his feet and gets 13 yards for the first down. Lock rolling, 8-10 to go in the first. Dixie State a 7 0 lead, but Shadron State into the red zone. Holst looking for Thurness into the end zone. Catch made, touchdown. And Alex Lilliard wants a push off in the end zone. He's not going to get it. And it's 7 6. Dixie State leading by one with a PAT pending. Lilliard still having a discussion with that near side official, but to no avail. Yeah, and he's right. Unfortunately for the Trailblazers, uh, Thurnus gets away with a push off here. It was pretty blatant. Not sure how this doesn't draw a flag by the official, but Alex Lilliard is pleading his case. And like you mentioned, you know, 
can't let these receivers get that open. Low snap on the ensuing PAT, but they're still able to get it up and through. 7.55 to go. We are tied at 7. That will take us to the media timeout in the first quarter. It's a 90-second timeout. And back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one. It's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Na, 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 na. Welcome back inside the broadcast yet? booth. Back. Yep, we're here. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. And Drayson, uh, we get to see our first look at the replay in the end zone. And not a whole lot there unless the push came before Thurnus was into the into the frame. But really what we were, you and I were talking about during the break was Dixie State had three different chances to get off the field on third down, including a third and long where you let the quarterback run for a, a long run. You got to be able to get those third down stops in a game like this. Yeah, and Fort Lewis, or Fort Lewis, Chatham State coming into this game just 39% off third down efficiency. You got to be able to capitalize when you get them to third down. Ensuing kickoff fielded by Xavier Smith. Two-yard line at far side. Smith making his way left to right. He's at the 20, 25, and brought down at the 25-yard line. And that is where the Trailblazers will take over. Tackle made by Bryant Wilson, redshirt sophomore linebacker for Shadron State. We've only seen one offensive play for Dixie State, Drayson, so we don't really know on what their calling card is going to be today. They went to the run, and it was a 69-yard touchdown run for Sage Luongo. We'll see how they try to mix it up on this drive. Yeah, after the fall, after the run, you got to be expecting the Trailblazers to continue to want to put pressure on this Shadron State defense. Uh, obviously, with this defense giving up 32 points per game, he got off to a great start with that 69-yard touchdown run by Sage Luongo. It'll be fun to see what they do here. Three receivers for Cody Wilstead. You've got Sage Luongo in the backfield. It's a pistol formation, but Chase Hess is back there as well. They'll give to Luongo around the right end, 30. And tackle just shy of the 35 of the 33-yard line, a pickup of seven yards for Sage A. Luongo on first down. You'll take that all day long. Yeah, hopefully the Trailblazers can find some consistency with the running game like this all day long. So hopefully they can get that rushing game really back to where it needs to be after seven yards on first down. Back to Sage A. on second down. He's diving for the 35-yard line, and he'll get the 35, but he'll be one yard shy of the first down. Needed three, picked up two. Third down and one for this Trailblazer offense with 7-13 remaining, and Dixie State going to hustle right back up to the to line of scrimmage. Under center is Cody Wilstead, and he's going to try to keep it, and he's got it. The long six foot seven frame of Cody Wilstead allows him to go under center. He was stopped on the first surge, and then he's able to push through and dive forward for the first down. Yeah, and he was, like you mentioned, he was stopped early, but that big six foot seven frame is he's able to get through and reach <laughs> arms across, across the 41 yard line enough for a first down. Just falls backwards and lets his height take over. Here we go. Fresh set of downs for the Trailblazers. First down's brought to you by Lonnie Boys Barbecue on first down. First pass for Cody Wilstead, tipped and incomplete. Pass was intended for Casey Allison, and that ball popped straight into the air. And if the Shadron State safety would have been looking, he'd have had an easy interception. That was Cole Condon. But he just ran right past the play. He could have picked that thing off and stayed in the air a good two seconds. Yeah, Wilstead tried to thread the needle in between two defenders, like you mentioned, Condon and the other one with uh, Jer Jeremiah Gutierrez. But that one was unfortunately not picked off by Shadron State. Five receivers set for the Trailblazers. Empty backfield for Wilstead. Shotgun snap, waist high. Pressure comes. He's going down. The football came out, and it's recovered by Shadron State. A live ball. It's a fumble and picked up by the Eagles inside the 25 at the Dixie State 22-yard line. 
Chattern State's for seven fumbles on the season so far this year. Uh, that's one of the things that they have done very, very well is forcing for, forcing fumbles and recovering them. This one, pressure just comes. Cody Wilstead never sees it from his backside. As you see here, he's looking to his left. Not sure why he didn't see him there. He was looking to his left and didn't see him. Just comes unblocked. The ball comes loose, and Chattern State falls on top of it. And it's Noah Kerchild that eventually ends up with it. Although defensive lineman Brennan Hopkins was the one that had a shot at it first. Here we go. Again, this Dixie State defense help out the offense. First down to Miles. He's across the 20 into the red zone and will be stopped at the 18-yard line. A pickup of four on a first down. Second down and six upcoming. And Miles has been their workhorse all season long. Over 86 carries coming into today's game. He's third in Armac in rushing over 475 yards on the ground. He's had a good game so far today on the two possessions that they've had. He does another one right here, five yards up the middle. Clock rolling, 6.05 to go in the first, and we are tied at seven on your Camping World scoreboard. Second down and six from the DSU 18-yard line. Two tight ends set for the Eagles. Play action, pass across the middle, Tavon right wide open. Some sort of miscommunication, and he'll make an easy touchdown catch, and it's 13-7, Shadron State, PAT pending, 5.49 to go in the first. Yeah, Alex Lilliard and Darius Nash are looking at each other. Just a miscommunication. You cannot leave Tavon Wright this wide open. He's their leading receiver right now as far as touchdowns goes, his 10th of the season. He just runs a post route right down the seam, and it's wide open after the Trailblazers' miscommunication. Probably Wright's easiest touchdown catch of the season. The PAT is up and through. 5.49 to go on your Camping World scoreboard. It's only the first quarter, folks, and it's 14-7 already. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a wonders. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back inside Trailblazer Stadium. Xavier Smith ensuing kickoff, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and knocked out of bounds across the 40-yard line. And Dixie State will take that all day long. That is how you answer a fumble and then a quick Shadron State touchdown, setting yourself up with good field position, just a 60-yard field now for the Trailblazers. And Drayson, uh, Xavier Smith has been clutch with those kickoff returns, has been a big part of this Dixie State special teams unit all season yeah, long. Yeah, he, he's done well setting the Trailblazers up in good field position here at the 40-yard line. And if you're Cody Willstead, you just got to put that last possession behind you. You fumbled, allowed them to get an easy field and an, and an open touchdown to Tevon Wright. You got to just put that behind you and keep, keep going forward. First down. Say J. Luongo is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. They went read option and Willstead kept it in there as long as he could before he left it with Sajay and didn't fool anybody. Yeah, and had he kept this one, he would have had a lot of room to run. You see here, just kind of reading that defensive end and good pursuit there by Joel Carpenter as he's the first man to reach him and brings him down. Longo does get a yard on the carry as he pushes forward, keeps his legs churning, but it'll force a second and nine. Second down and nine. Ball at the Dixie State 41 yard line, 5.05 to play in the first. Two receivers split out either side for Wilstead. And he is hitting the backfield. And he's going to be sacked. One guy stood him up, and then two others came in, were trying to rip that football out. And the whistles rang out. It never actually was tackled to the ground, but they blow the play dead. 
and it's a loss of three. It'll be third down and 12. It looked like it was a designed quarterback run, and the hole closed very quickly. There was a couple of guys there that crashed down on Wilstead as he tried to sneak through the hole. Just nothing there. Great crowd on hand. It's homecoming Saturday here at Dixie State. Trips to the right side for Wilstead on third down and 12. Will load up, fires downfield. Allison's there, but can't get to it. Overthrown by Wilstead and it's incomplete. And Dixie State will have to punt. And this is what we were talking about in the pregame show. The, the, the defense likes to run this, this cover one deep high safety. And the Trailblazers can have success here trying to throw the ball over over the top of the defense here to the sidelines, but just a little bit overthrown there, not able to get it to Casey Allison as he had a step on his defender. It'll be Hunter Wood on to punt. Walter Ponya will make his way onto the field with 10 seconds on the play clock. Dixie State better hurry to get this one off. Thurnus is waiting back at the Shadron State 20. Play clock down to two and snap at one, and the punt is away. Thurnus will field it at the 24-yard line. Has a seam up the middle of the field. His trip still on his feet, 45-50 across the 50 and down to the Dixie State 49-yard line. The Eagles will start in Dixie State territory. And from what we've seen from this offense, making quick work to score its last touchdown, a dangerous situation for this Dixie State defense. Yeah, and Cole Thurness on this return does a very good job of just seeing the open spaces, makes a couple of guys miss, evades the tackler here and there, and gets across the 50, sets up the Eagles in great field position inside Dixie State territory. 4.08 to go here in the first. Dixie State trailing 14-7 and Shadron State with it. Elijah Miles on first down, off tackle left side. Pressing the issue across the 45, down to the 44-yard line, and whistles and flags flying everywhere. And I think this is going on Dixie State, Drayson. We talked about trying to keep it within the whistles. I mean, there's six yellow flags on the field right now. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Darius Nash gets ejected here. He, I think, think I saw him throw a punch. And they are having a lengthy discussion. Like conduct number six defense bloated a helmet 15 yard penalty automatic first down this is number six first unsportsmanlike conduct foul as it relates to his disqualification from the contest yeah and like we mentioned this this is just you can't i mean i'm surprised he did not get ejected i mean that's absolutely unacceptable if you're darius nash and and it you know, it just cannot happen. You have an offense that has scored on their both possessions so far. You give them 15 more yards. It's just something that cannot happen in this game. 3.53 to go in the first. Shadron State first down and 10 at the Dixie State 30-yard line. Snap to Holst. They'll leave it with Miles. He's tripped up after a pickup of two yards. Second down and eight. This Dixie State defense is going to have to dig in deep. The Trailblazers have not trailed by two scores. Do you know when the last time was, Drayson? Uh, I know I, what it is. I just want to see. I would say last season uh, by, against. No, by two scores. By two scores. So you lost 36-7 to seven to CSU Pueblo. Right, right. Okay, yeah. Well, I, okay, yeah, that's right. Second down snap to right, and he is stopped immediately. Holst handed it off to him. He was tripped up in the backfield, and then help came. It'll be third down and eight at the DSU 28-yard line. Dixie Back. State, so you're going to say the CSU Pueblo game? Sure. Dixie State trailed 13 to nothing to Fort Lewis at halftime. You, yeah. That was the last time. That was week two of this year. Last time Dixie State has trailed by more than one score. In danger of that here, unless you can get off the field here. Third down and eight at Dixie State 28-yard line. And the Eagles are within range of their kicker, Colton Dollar. Oh, he, he was, was at pregame. He was hitting them from 40 consistently. So they're well within field goal range. If the Trailblazers can get off the field here, they'll at least force a field goal. Holst, incomplete pass, left side. Went play action and tried to swing it to the left to Ethan Frey, the freshman wide receiver from Denver, Colorado. Threw it too far out in front of him, incomplete. Will the Eagles keep the offense on the field? This could be a big turning point in the football game. It's fourth down and eight. 
So you're looking at about a 45-yard field goal right now, Drayson. Yeah, this is, this is a, cru this could be a for crucial it. stop for Dixie State's defense if they can get them off the field here. Fourth down at eight. Miles at the right hip of Holst. He's going to throw, though. Pressure comes. He'll pull it down. Throws it. Wide open receiver. Touchdown, Shadron State on fourth down. Another blown coverage downfield, and Shadron State leads it 20 to 7 with 2.34 to go in the first. Yeah, Brandon Fullerton, uh, he just was wide open, ran a, a corner route, and uh, initially Holtz was looking to his left, didn't see Fullerton coming open over the middle. And as he worked his way there towards the corner, just saw him as, as he scrambled to his right, finds him wide open for the end zone. A huge conversion on fourth down and eight. PAT is up and in, 21-7. Dixie State trailing by two scores for the first time since week two. 2.34 to go in the first. A lot of football to be played. How will the Trailblazers respond? Let's take a 30-second timeout, just a 30. Come right back. There is a place where rocks bleed and nature blushes on a battlefield green with envy, where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where friends are opponents and opponents are friends, where the prize is elusive, the conquest is captivating, and the score isn't settled till the drinks are down. There is a place. Two thirty-four to go in the first quarter, and Dixie State finds itself in a situation it has not found itself in for quite some time. The Trailblazers trailing by two touchdowns, twenty-one to seven, on a homecoming. The silver lining is there's still a lot of football to be played. Xavier Smith will take this kickoff. No, it's going to bounce in the end zone, and it's a touchback. Dixie State will have it at the twenty-five yard line. Trailblazers have got to find something on offense right now. Obviously, since the first play of the game, which went 69 yards to the house, since A.J. Luongo had that run, they had the fumble, and then they had uh, they were forced to punt on their previous possession. they got to get something going offensively. You're already down two scores. You can't afford to give them anything more. Your defense has already been playing uh, pretty poorly to this point. A few blown coverages have led to some easy touchdowns. you got to have something going on in your offensive end. 2.34 remaining in the first. Cody Wilstead with Darman Minotoa in the backfield. Play action, rolls out to his right, looking, he's going to run. 25, 30, stiff arm, and then tackle out of bounds at the 30-yard line after a pickup of five. No flag's going to fly, and I, and I think that's probably the right call. The tackle started well inside the field of play, and it's hard to disengage once you're already underneath somebody. So he, he hits him right there two yards in and rolls away from him. That's good no call. They'll give him six yards officially to the 31 yard line. Second down and four. 208 remaining in the first. Snap to Wilstead. Play action. Pressure comes. Rolls out to his right and he's brought down from behind. He is sacked. The Shadron State team set a season high with sacks with five sacks last week against Texas Permian Basin, and they are continuing to add to that, picking up right where they left off this week. And that's Travis Wilson, the Eagles' leading tackler. He had 78 tackles coming into the season and a one and a half sacks. He gets the solo sack here as he brings down Wilson from behind, just chases him down and brings him back down for a loss of about eight. Cody Wilstead's hand is bleeding. I don't think Keaton Mott is available today. So you see Tanner Hammond sprinting down the sideline to get his helmet. He'll have to leave the game. Be Wilstead will have to leave the game because of blood. And he'll get back in quickly once they get that sorted. But Tanner Hammond is going to have to come in on third down and 12 as Keaton Mott still not available after being dinged up a couple of weeks ago against Simon Frazier. So Tanner Hammond is in on third down and 12. He's certainly not in the scouting report for Shadron State. Can he work a little magic here? 
The lefty drops back, screen pass to Toa. 25, 30, 35, 40, first down, 45 yard line. Tanner Hammond to Darwin Natoa. I'm telling you, the third string quarterback runs onto the football field and there's nothing in the scouting report for him. First down, Trailblazers. It just runs a little screen play here and it was set up beautifully by the Trailblazers. Darwin Natoa just kind of stays right behind his blockers. You see Hammond does a good job of finding him, throws it over a couple defenders, Natoa runs behind his blockers and gets out to about past the 45 yard line and sets up a huge first down for the Trailblazers. Huge third down conversion for Dixie State. Hammond will remain in the game. One minute remaining in the first. Trailblazers out to the, their own 44 yard line. First down, Hammond throwing far side and it is caught by Jalen Powell. And then Hammond it is destroyed after the play as well. This should be a roughing the passer penalty, but what a catch by Jalen Powell. Yeah, wow, he went full extension. He was almost parallel to the ground as he brings in this one as we get the call from the head referee. Personal foul, number 30, defense, roughing the passer. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Starting to see some of those kind of penalties on both sides. Good play by Hammond to hang in there. And wow, they went, he went up high. He's lucky he might, didn't get hit for targeting on that play. The Dixie State is into Shadron State territory with the redshirt sophomore Tanner Hammond at quarterback. 40 seconds remaining. Two receivers near side, one split out to the left. Darman to at the right hip of Tanner Hammond. Hammond on first down, loads up, fires near side. Dewan Dancer makes the catch, wriggles out of a tackle. He's at the 30, and then it's brought down at the 30-yard line, a pickup of seven for the Trailblazers. It'll be second down and three. And Dancer just runs a little comeback route. Hammond finds him a long pass from the left hash all the way to the right sideline. They go quick, handoff. Darman Natoa lowers the head, and wow, what a tackle by Shadron State. And that's Calder for Sella. In on the stop. It looked like it's hard to bring Natoa down, but he stops him like a brick wall. Yeah, he just grabs him uh, by the legs there and doesn't let him get any further. Travis Wilson Wilson was also there on the tackle. That will bring us to the end of the first quarter. 15 minutes of football in the books. Dixie State trailing 21 to 7. However, the Trailblazers have been moving on this drive. Can they get into the end zone and fight their way back into the game? We'll take a 30 second timeout, just a 30, and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. <laughs> Give your town a reason to celebrate, because every Goodwill item you bring home brings job training and more to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth, Dixie State. Trailing 21 to seven. As we move into the second quarter, Dixie State being outgained 155 to 95 in the first quarter. Cody Wilstead back into the football game, Drayson, as Dixie State faces third down and two from the Shadron State 29. Yeah, good job to Tanner Hammond uh, coming in and, and moving the ball. I mean, he moved the ball a good portion down the field, a couple of passes that were caught by Dantzler and Powell, and then the screen pass to Notoa. Did a good job in uh, replacement of Wilstead. Third down and two. Wilstead is going to run for it. Right side. He's hit and tries to reach out for the first down, and he's short. Needed two, only got one. I'm not sure if that was a design quarterback keeper of just something that he saw after as he was rolling out to his right. He has stopped. Dixie State going to go for it on fourth down and one. You're trailing by two touchdowns. Second quarter. Big play here. Or are they going to go for it? They're trying to get Chadron State to jump off sides. Plenty of time on the play clock. They look over to the sideline, and now they're setting back up again. Pistol formation with Natoa behind Willstead. Willstead is going to pass across the middle, batted incomplete. Turnover on downs for the Trailblazers. And that one was read perfectly by Tyler Lewis, their linebacker over the middle. He just floats to his right, reads Cody Willstead's eyes all the way, and that one was just batted down. A good coverage there by Tyler Lewis. 
Shadron State has had three offensive possessions and they've scored on all three. And this Dixie State defense dial up a stop here. You've got to. Trailing 21 to seven with 14-22 to go in the second quarter. Got to see if you can force a turnover here, maybe put him in a bad situation. Gonna have to have a turnover at some point. Running back is Steven Brown. They go to Brown, feeling his way off tackle to the left side. And he'll pick up two yards on the play after the 30 yard line, second down and eight. Yeah, like I mentioned, they like to run up in between the tackles, but this one you see that hole filled nicely by Will Yama Yamasaki and uh, forces him to bounce it out to the outside. He does get outside the tackles, but eventually the Trailblazers bring him down with a host of red jerseys. Clock rolling, 13.55 to go in quarter number two. Dixie State a 21-7 deficit. Holst throwing far side incomplete. Tavon Wright couldn't catch up to it. Third down and eight. If you're the Trailblazers, you absolutely have to get this stop. Yeah, the, uh, Eagles, get the ball back. Eagles have done a good job on third down so far this game. Uh, the Trailblazers have to have a stop. But just put your heels in. Don't let any uh, blown coverages or miscommunication happen. you got to get this third down uh, conversion if you want to get your defense off the field and your offense back on there. Third down and eight ball at the 31-yard line. Trips to the near side. Holst looks to the sideline, gets the information he was looking for, relays it to the offensive line. Four on the play clock. Pass across the middle, tipped incomplete. Aaron Simpson in coverage to break up that pass intended for Tavon Wright. And the Trailblazers defense has done it. Chadron State will have to punt. Yeah, good job by Aaron Simpson here. He uh, whole stares down right all the way. Aaron Simpson good in coverage. Maybe gets a hand on that one, brings down right. No chance to haul that one in. It'll force the first punt for Chadron State. And on to do the punting honors. Ethan Zimmerman. Xavier Smith standing back at his own 30-yard line. Zimmerman will punt this one from his own 20. High hanging kick out of bounds. It bounces out of bounds at the 28-yard line. So where did that go? Are they going to say it only went out of bounds at the 30? I guess it didn't go out of bounds very far, so certainly it didn't cut out of bounds early. So Dixie State will have it at the 30-yard line, a 70-yard field. With 13.34 to go, Drayson, Dixie State trailing 21 to seven. There is a ton of football to be played in this game. You think if Dixie State can get down the field and punch it in, we've got a whole new ball game at that point. Yeah, and they, and they just really haven't been able to find anything consistent, uh, neither through the air nor through the ground. Uh, obviously, aside from the 69-yard run to start the game, they haven't had a whole lot of success running through the ground. Hammond did find a couple of receivers through the air on the last drive. We'll see what they do here. Will Stead on first down. Play action. Fires downfield. Dantzler's there. He can't get to it. Incomplete. One yard in front of him, and he couldn't get to it. And this is what we said. This, this is the, where the Trailblazers can have success. We've seen it done twice already so far today, but Willstead has just overthrown both of his receivers. They play cover one safety. There's no safety over the middle, over the top at all. Uh, to either side of the field, you know, if you pick one side, the safety's going to be on the other side. You can get them uh, into a bad situation. This one just overthrown. 13-27 to go in the second. Second down and 10. Willstead. Throws. Allison had it in his hands and it is knocked out incomplete. Chadron State trying to return it, but it's an incomplete pass. The pass was broken up. And it'll be third down and ten. I'll tell you, if there's there's two football teams out there right now, Drayson, and there's one football team that from the get-go, other than their long touchdown run, has really looked ready to play today, and it's the visitors in white. Yeah, and Cole Condon did a heck of a job there in coverage. As soon as he saw the pass go to that side of the field, and Casey Allison, he dug his heels in and turned uh, from backpedaling to driving forward and was able to knock that ball loose. Willstead will step up, sling it across the middle and incomplete. Was looking for Malcolm Ross Turner, and he threw it past him by a good five yards, and Dixie State will have to punt away. Yeah, Willstead uh, stepped up into the pocket and thought he might want to tuck this one and run. He saw Ma Malcolm Ross Turner at the very last second try to throw off balance, a sidearm throw, and just threw it behind him. Malcolm Ross Turner was trying to come over the middle and get into Cody Willstead's vision, but this one just thrown behind him. Hunter Woods standing at his own 16-yard line. Cole Thurness back at his own 30. Woods. 
Wood just barely gets it away. It's a short kick, high end over end kick, and it bounces and it'll take a Shadron State bounce. And Dixie State will down it at the Shadron State 41 yard line. Hunter Wood barely got that kick off. And it'll be another short field for Shadron State. Yeah, that was uh, really good by the, by the Eagles to get out of the way of that one. A lot of times with those short punts, you don't really know where the ball is. Obviously, most of return teams have some sort of a code word to know that the ball is short. The ball might come down and maybe hit one of those uh, one of those on the receiving team. They did a good job of kind of just you know, getting out of the way so the, the ball didn't touch one of those on the receiving team for the Trailblazers to recover the muffed punt. First down at 10, ball at the Shadron State 41-yard line. Here's Miles on first down right up the middle, and he'll pick up seven yards, second down and three. Miles is having a really good game so far. They've gone to him on a handful of occasions. He's just been eating up yards for them, running between the tackles. He always lowers his head and has a head full of steam as he gets onto the Dixie State logo right short of the 50. Second down and three. Holst with one receiver flanked out to either side. Elijah Miles in the backfield with him. The tight end lined up to block on the right side is Matt Vargas. Holst back to Miles, making his way around the left end. Is hit first by Sir Barnes and then brought down by a host of tacklers. A flag comes out near the end of that. And you hope that's not a face mask. And it may be. Might also be a hold here. It could be a hold. We'll just wait and find out, won't we? Face mask. Face mask. Number 35, defense. 15 yard penalty from in the run. Automatic first down. And it's going to so, go against Barnes. So far, we're 0 for 2 on the uh, face mask or hold uh, penalties so far today. And he did get him with the left hand. You can see it hooked around there. So, if anything could go wrong for Dixie State in this first half, other than the first play from scrimmage, it, it pretty much has gone wrong. 12.08 to go until halftime. Jet sweep left side. Thurnus is stopped at the 30-yard line. He'll pick up seven. And I'm actually going to mark him at the 31. Six-yard pickup. Second down and four upcoming. Shadron State moving the ball at will. And already Thurnus's fifth catch on the day for 30 yards. They've gone to him a few different times on that little jet sweep. That does technically go yep. in as a it pass. Is a pass. As it's a kind of a pass. forward lateral, almost like a handoff, but that does go in as a pass, and Thurnus gets seven yards on first down. Maybe that's why Dalton Hulse is leading the RMAC in passing. Miles around the left end, first down yardage, and more. Needed four, picked up six, and the chains move down to the 25-yard line. Of course, I kid, I kid. Dalton Hulse, very talented quarterback. He's got a great arm and slings it downfield a lot. Trailblazers just haven't been able to do a lot right here against Elijah Miles. He likes to, you know, he does a good job of finding those holes and being able to just bring a few defenders with him. Even if he gets, uh, ta or, you know, wrapped up, he can bring a couple defenders with him for extra yards. Miles up the middle again. Six-yard gain inside the 20 to the 19. Dixie State no answer right now. Yeah, and, and I, I, I hate to say it, this Trailblazer team almost looks lifeless right now, Drayson. Yeah, haven't, haven't I hate seen, to say haven't, that. Haven't seen a whole lot of push right now uh, up front. They, they, they've been punched in the mouth in a way that they have not been since week one. And they need to respond. Elijah Miles right now already up to 61 yards rushing on the ground. He's just had his way uh, everywhere he's gone with the football today. Holst back to Miles, and he's upended and stopped. No gain, it'll be third down and four at the 19 yard line. Shadron State philosophy right now is if you can't stop it, we're gonna keep going to him. Took an awkward hit, so he's gonna come out and Priest Jennings, the redshirt junior is gonna come on. That was Mark Lopez that, that wrapped him up there and kind of drove him backwards, almost like, looked like his right leg or his right side might have gotten uh, injured on that play. Third down and five. Now Jennings, talented running back in and of himself, four carries, 194 yards this year, and a couple touchdowns. And he is very fast. Third down, Holst to the end zone. Receiver is there, and he makes the catch, even though he was held. 
and it will be a touchdown. Tavon right a highlight reel catch in the end zone. Aaron Simpson held him up. He still made the catch. Wright's helmet popped off in the end zone, and it is 26 to 27 to 7 with 9.39 to go in quarter number two. And the Trailblazers asking themselves, what has happened? Yeah, and this is just a, a great ball uh, thrown by uh, Dalton Holst here. As you see, uh, the media, uh, excuse me, the, the, the flag basically was declined as they uh, find uh, Taven Wright in the end zone. Second touchdown catch of the day. Just a great pass by Holtz. Low snap on the PAT, and they still get it up and through. Dixie State in some trouble. 9.39 to go. Dixie State trailing 28-7. to It is the media timeout, so we'll take the full 90-second timeout at 90 and come back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one. It's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your dog walker, on your left, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. There is a place where young and old make connections. Where kids feel like grown-ups. And grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast. Where wonder is universal and laughter second nature. There is a place where friends find a future, families find each other, and feelings find their home. There is a place. Nine thirty-nine to go. Dixie State in trouble, trailing 28 to 7. We welcome you back inside Trailblazer Stadium. This is a Shadron State team that we mentioned in the in the TDS pregame show that has scored over 40 points in his last two outings and has turned a corner. A squib kick on the ensuing kickoff. Xavier Smith will pick it up 15 yard line. Now at the 20, making his way and is brought down at the 20. A lot of running and back and forth. Xavier Smith, the ball the ball and not a long return. And Dixie State will have an 80 yard field. And the Trailblazers, you think, Drayson, at this point, down three touchdowns, you've got to score on this drive. And this is maybe a must-score uh, possession if you're the Trailblazers. Nine and a half minutes to go. They received the opening half kick, so they'll have to kick off to begin the second half. And you'd like to score here. See if maybe you can, if you score here, get a three and out, and maybe you can score again before halftime. You know, put yourself in a situation where you go into the halftime break only down one touchdown. You put yourself in a good situation. 9.30 to go, and I mentioned before the game, don't let the discrepancy in these two teams' records fool you. This is a very good Shadron State football team. First down, here's Sajan. No, it's Wilstead keeping it on the read option, and he's brought down across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Six-yard pickup for Cody Wilstead. It'll be second down and four. Shadron State's got two losses by just one score. Nine oh four and ticking. I'll finish that thought in just a moment. Second down. Here's Willstead. Fires far side. Pass is intercepted. This may be an interception, Drayson. Caught and then taken are away. Say, or are they going to say a catch and the knee was down? What are they saying? Is it? They marked the football on third down. Dixie State. Now I, I think it was just a, a catch and maybe they ruled this forward progress had stopped. Wow. I would love to get another look at this. They're going to give, was it Dewan Dantzler a catch on the far side? Wow. Wow, that's, that's uh, a fumble. Yep, that, that's... Uh, Dixie State gets a break. Has got to take advantage of this. No replay. 
the NCAA Division II level. Sajay on third down goes nowhere. Dixie State going to have to punt away. And yeah, this the home one, faithful starting to get restless below us, Drayson. Yeah, this one was just a, like, a designed off-tackle run. CJ just not able to get any room to run here, as you see. Just tries to get him off tackle. He cuts up the middle, but two uh, Eagles defenders there are right there to wrap him up, short of the line of gain. He needed to get the 30, got back there just to the line of scrimmage is all. They gave him forward progress, but still going to be a yard short. 7.48 to go until halftime. Hunter Wood just barely gets that one away again. An awkward kick. It's going to take a Dixie State bounce. Thurness is going to try to field it, and he does it. He's taken down by Cajun smith Bagrevich. Maybe that'll shock some life into this Dixie State sideline. Yeah, and they, uh, the defense needs it right now. Uh, they've scored on all their possessions except for the one. They had a punt there, and uh, the Trailblazers have to get something going defensively if they're going to want to stay in this game. You can't give them too much of a lead. You can deal with three touchdowns right now. Your, your offense at times has been great this season. You've put up 55 points on multiple occasions. You can score the football, but you cannot give them anything more. If you get too far gone, I mean, you know, maybe some uh, someone starts to doubt. You might not be able to get back into yourself into this game. 28 to seven, Dixie State trailing by three touchdowns. 7:28 to go, second quarter. Holst will leave with Miles. Miles gets two yards and then is pushed backwards. Second down and eight. Clock rolling. 7:18 to play. And for me, it's got to be this defensive line. You got to get, yeah. you got to get their run game stopped. Uh, Miles has had his way over 60 yards already in this first half. You got to do better on the defensive line to stop him and force them to pass. Well, no sacks so far for this Trailblazer offense in the first half. Trailblazer defense in the first half. Just not getting a lot of push up front defensively. Holst fires far side, incomplete, flag thrown, and it's the right call. It's going to be, it's going to be holding. The flag came out late, but I mean Aaron Simpson is is on him. Oh, they're going to get pass interference. Pass interference. Well, he's. Yeah, they're going to call. I pass guess it's all about when the ball came out, but. Number twenty-four, defense, fifteen-yard penalty, automatic first down. And it's it's the right call. I mean Aaron Simpson is is yeah, grabbing but, him. But to, Wright's got his left arm on there as well. I mean, you're, you're just hand fighting. I mean, that's they've been called three times on that kind of hand fighting stuff. If the offensive players engage as well, you just got to let that one go. That one's a pretty ticky-tack one as well in my book. 6.45 to go on first down. Home run ball downfield. Wright is there. Can't get to it. Incomplete. Chadron State trying to pour it on. Trying to pour some salt in an open wound. And it falls incomplete. Second down and 10. Yeah, this one was just thrown, uh, you know, Holt had all kinds of time there, uh, you know, in the in the pocket. Tries to find Wright coming over the middle. He ran a deep uh, post route. Just this one was a little bit overthrown. Alton Holst has to get rid of his towel that's hanging from his pants, tosses it back to the 40-yard line, and Chadron State has it at midfield. Second down and 10, play clock at 3, 2, and they get it off with 1. They go to Miles up the middle. He picks up 3 yards, but no more. It'll be third down and 7. Still in an area where if you can get a stop, they'll have to punt the ball away. And We've seen the Eagles go for it on fourth down, so yeah. you never know, but Miles uh, just keeps keeps churning, hasn't had a negative carry so far today, has not been tackled in the backfield. He gets three yards on second down, forcing up a third and manageable on uh, third and seven. Let's not forget the Shadron State team was picked to finish third in the RMAC this year, ahead of Colorado Mesa and Dixie State. This is a really good football team. And Dixie State's trailing by three scores. Snap to Holst on third down and seven. Fires, and it's going to be picked off. Yes, no, incomplete. And a late flag. Alex Lilliard was in coverage. Loco Tui came over and nearly had an interception. That flag was thrown out late, way late. 
And this ball was not even catchable. It was nowhere near the receiver. I, I cannot believe, how can they call a pass interference on a, on a ball that was nowhere near catchable? There is no foul for defensive pass interference. As the ball was tipped, it will be court down. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it was tipped and there was nowhere near the, the, the receiver. That, I was going to be shocked if they were going to go pass interference on this one. The ball was nowhere close to the receiver. Yeah, nowhere close. The receiver was right on the sideline. The ball landed at the numbers. The big break for Dixie State. So the Trailblazers with 5.49 to go until halftime. We'll get the ball back. Xavier Smith standing at his own 10 yard line. Can he create some fireworks here? Gonna call for a fair catch and makes an over the shoulder fair catch. The five yard line, that ball had a lot of momentum on it. It might've got into the end zone, but there was five white jerseys right there as well. Couldn't risk it. Trailblazers will start at their own seven yard line. Let's not forget, Shadron State will get the ball first in the second half. Yeah, you got to go down and score you right gotta here. you got to score on you this You got to have at least some positive production offensively. And even if you get three points, you just got to have to find something that can consistently work throughout the game, whether it be the run, whether it be through the air. You got to find some consistency and go down and get points. 5.38 remaining until halftime. First down, and that goes nowhere. A delayed handoff to CJ Luongo, and he loses big time yardage. Loss of five back to the two yard line. Yeah, this one was a design counter. They faked him to the left and then brought him back to the right. Two Eagles were right there to meet him, just came unblocked. That's, That's Joel, just too long. Joel Carpenter as well as Noah Kirchall. I mean, you get the delayed handoff, but that's, that's too long. Second down and 14 from your own two. They'll swing it near side. Catch made by Malcolm Ross Turner, tackled from behind. Where will they mark him down to the nine yard line? Pickup of six. Dixie State will need eight yards for a first down. And this one is a good play call. Just get you out into open space and see if you can get uh, a few extra yards to make this a third down manageable. They'll have wow. third and eight and a huge time uh, third down for Dixie State. Two receivers split out either side. Willstead on third down. Pump fake, pulls it down. He's in trouble. He's going down. He'll pick up two yards, but that's it. Dixie State going to have to punt the football. Now you're just in damage control. You're hoping for a turnover. You're hoping to go into the locker room. Only trailing by three scores and to add insult to injury. And that's a bad pun to use right now. Taylor Alvarez, offensive lineman, is down hurt is what I was trying to get at. And he will be attended to. He's on his feet. Bruno Silva, the Dixie State Football trainer out talking to him. Still attending to him. 4.28 to go. Dixie State in a punting situation. Trailing 28 to 7. And there's not one person in this packed Trailblazers Stadium, at least packed on the west side, and a pretty good crowd on the east side as well. There's not one person that saw this coming. I think we all envisioned maybe a 28-28 game at this point over a 28 to 7 game. Hunter Wood to punt from his own end zone. Does Dixie State have the guts to fake it right here? No way. They won't. Not, not at this point. I'm just kidding. Shadow State wouldn't expect it. But if you, yeah. He's going to punt the football. He'll get it away. Thurness waiting for it at midfield. Makes the catch. Fumble the football. It's loose. And he came back up with it. That was perhaps the break that Dixie State needed as Thurnus tried to field it on the run, but able to fall back on top of it. And Shadron State will have it at the Dixie State 44-yard line. Yeah, that, that was just a case of Thurnus' momentum working against him. He had to kind of run up to catch that one. He wanted to try to run and keep his momentum so that he was already sprinting by the time he grabbed that one, but just not able to get a hand on it. His momentum caused him to, force, or to fumble that one. Fortunately for the Eagles, he was able to land on it. Heard in the crowd below us. We need a turnover right here. Hand off Miles. Bounces off two defenders and then surges forward for two more yards. He'll pick up three. Second down and seven. Clock rolling at 3.57 to and go. A flag. And a penalty flag after the play. 
I just, at, at this point, I don't think there's any more to say about it, Tracer. Personal foul, blind side block, number 77, offense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Still first down. I guess that's what we get for assuming. We figured it was going against the home squad. Well, usually when you see, I mean, the flag came the out flag extremely was, late. It was sitting back in the Dixie, Dixie in the State secondary. Where the, where the, yeah. It was thrown by uh, the, the back judge just here back in the secondary. And normally when you see it thrown in that area, it's because uh, there's, a, there's an after the whistle penalty. It was thrown extremely late. But fortunately for the Trailblazers, it backs the Eagles up. Uh, a huge loss. It's going to be first and 21 back from uh, their own 44-yard line. First and long for Shadron State, 3.40 to go until halftime. It's a jet sweep left side, Thurness, and he'll pick up two yards. It'll be second down and 20 for the Eagles. Yeah, and you'll give up that play as long as you only give up two yards. They've ran that play two times before, give it to Thurness, just kind of wanting to get him out in space. He's extremely quick. He's extremely fast, as we've seen multiple times before. They like to run that, and if you can give up only two yards on a first and 22, you'll take that every time. It'll force now a third and 20. Second and 20, excuse me. Clock rolling, 3.10 to go. Dixie State has all three timeouts. Wouldn't be surprised if Shadron just contend to run yeah. this ball and see if they yep. can't waste some more clock. The Eagles will get the ball to start the second half. So here's Miles up the middle. And he'll pick up six yards. It'll be third down and 14. And if, you're the, if you're the Trailblazers, you cannot let them convert this third down and 14. If you're going to salvage anything in this game so far, you got to be able to get them off the field when they get to third down, especially on this one. Third down and 14, there's not a whole lot in the playbook if you're the Eagles for third down and 14. If you can get the ball back, you got two minutes left or so, you got three timeouts, you got a good chance to score going into halftime. 2.20 to go until halftime. Eagles are going to let as much time run off this clock as they can. Play clock down to five, got a three and two. Snap at one. Holst, pressure comes, he'll step up, gets away from a defender. He's on the run, and then it's smashed at the 40-yard line of Dixie State. That's six yards shy of the first down. Picks up eight. Whistles and a Dixie State timeout. And don't be surprised to see Shadron State keep the offense on the field. And it will be a Dixie State timeout. We'll keep it right here, let you know that timeouts are brought to you by Dairy Queen. Dalton Holst has really taken advantage of situations, Trace. Good coverage downfield. They don't get a whole lot of push on him in the backfield, and he's able to just tuck and run. And now it's fourth and manageable, and I can almost guarantee that Coach Jay Long with a three touchdown lead is going to send the Eagles back out with the offense. Yeah, and why not? You're in a, you're in kind of a no man's land area at the 40 yard line. You know, not a whole lot of uh, ground gain if you punt it unless you can put it inside the 10 yard line. Um, you know, they've gone for it on fourth down on a couple different occasions today uh, with worse uh, field position. I mean, fourth and six is better than they had a fourth and eight earlier in the game that went for a touchdown. So fourth and six from the 40 would not be surprised one bit to see them go for it here. And why not? Even if you don't get it, your defense has played well enough today. You haven't really limited, you haven't really given up anything to Dixie State's offense with the exception of the long run to start the game. But uh, yeah, why not go for it here if you're the Eagles and see if you can uh, get another score here before halftime. 157 on your Camping World scoreboard until halftime. If you're just joining us, Dixie State trailing Shadron State 28 to seven. Offense will come back out onto the field for the Eagles. And it's a three receiver set. Miles at the left hip of Holst. Trying to draw Dixie State off sides. Didn't work on that attempt. Play clock at 10. Game clock is stopped after a Dixie State timeout. Holst still trying to draw Dixie State off sides. They're not going to go for it. They're going to call a timeout. And they'll try something else. Eagles will take a timeout and either discuss whether or not they really actually want to go for it on first on fourth down or if they're going to try to punt the ball away or heck with a three touchdown lead you might as well let 
Colton Dolder bring the leg out and try to bomb one. I, I know mean, it would be extremely I mean, that long, would be a long point, field goal. That would be a 57-yarder from this point hey. in the field. He was good. He was he was consistently good from about 50 yards in pregame warm-ups. But, uh, you know, he I don't know. It didn't look like to me he had the leg to get 57. So uh, I think maybe just a little bit out of his range, and, and I'd be surprised to see him out here on fourth down. Well, everything else has gone the Eagles' way today. Again, timeouts brought to you by Dairy Queen. Remind you, coming up in just a couple of minutes, it's our Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. And the Trailblazers trailing 28 to seven. And I, the, the, my thinking this, this last few minutes, Trace, was that if Dixie State could at least score another touchdown, you, you've trailed by two touchdowns at halftime before this year and still won. There's a big difference in a two touchdown lead and a three touchdown lead. Three touchdown lead, certainly not insurmountable, but if, if you could still find a way to get some points before halftime, you're doing yourself a big favor. I know that's a Captain Obvious statement, but. Now the Eagles gonna send the punting unit out onto the field. Dixie State was not prepared for that. Now they'll send Xavier Smith out onto the field. Be on the lookout for a fake here still. Zimmerman will punt this football away. A high punt. Xavier Smith going to let it bounce, and it's going to stay. It's going to be downable. We'll take a bounce toward the sideline at the five yard line, and Dixie State will have a 95 yard field. A good punt by Ethan Zimmerman. Yeah, it's a great punt. Uh, just popped it up right in the air. It was a very, very high punt. It allowed the uh, the Gunners to get downfield and force Xavier Smith to let that one go. And, and you know. A great punt. You got to give credit where credit is due. And uh, he downs it inside the five yard line as we see Tanner Hammond come out to lead this Trailblazer offense to fi finish the half. And he looked really pretty good. And in, in when Cody Wilstead was shaken up on a couple of plays, he was in there. They're going to try to throw a little something different at him. Hammond throws to Dewan Dantzler, makes the catch across the 20. Across the 15, down near the 20. And it gets out to the 20. Clock stops momentarily. Dixie State will go two-minute drill here. And hustle back to the line. The ball is spotted, and it starts rolling again at 135. Snap to Hammond. The lefty fires. Jalen Powell, did he catch it or did he drop it? You almost wish he would have dropped that ball. He caught it, and the clock will continue to roll. Not a great throw. Now they're going to come in, and they're going to say incomplete. And not sure uh, the the far it's, side official that was 55 yards away. If, if it's going to be incomplete, incomplete, they're going to have to put about four or five seconds back up on the clock. It, it, I hear the crowd kind of arguing for this. They are going to rule a catch. Dixie State players are arguing for a catch. The fans are arguing for a catch. It was only, a, I guess they're going to give it a five-yard gain. It looked only to be about two yards. yards. Now the clock rolls. Second and five, snap to Tanner Hammond. Throws downfield, Casey Allison can't make a diving catch. Had slipped past his defender and it went right through his hands. Out near the 45 yard line. Yeah, Allison just ran a beautiful out and up route and got behind the defenders. Tanner Hammond put the ball right on the money and Casey Allison just drops this one. Let it, let's it go right through his hand. I mean, that was one you have to make. I mean, yeah, he did have to kind of dive for it, but uh, the ball was put in a great position for Allison to, to bring that one in. You gotta be able to convert those. 116 until halftime. Hammond on third down. Pressure comes. Trying to evade a defender. Looking downfield. And he finds the tight end. Chase has and he can't make the catch on the run. Incomplete. A great play by Tanner Hammond to keep the play alive. Ultimately will fall incomplete. And some discussion. I don't is there a flag? Down? Reset the game clock. No. So one minute, 14 seconds. We're going to put three seconds back up on the, the game clock. And Dixie State will have to punt the ball away. And normally shorthanded Chase Hess uh, not able to bring that one in onto the sideline. That one's a little bit more difficult one to catch than the, the, the Casey Allison uh, drop uh, on the play before. But that one's certainly a catchable ball there near the sideline. Would have been a huge conversion on third down for Dixie State. They'll be forced to punt it.
Wood, a good punt. It's going to send Thurnus backwards, and it will bounce at the 20-yard line and take a Shadron State bounce back a couple of yards, but it will be down by Braxton Hatch at the Shadron State 22-yard line. A good punt by Hunter Wood. And that may be just deep enough that you're going to see Shadron State maybe just go conservative, knowing that they'll get the ball back well, they've to got start the second half, but they do have all. They have two they've timeouts. Got two timeouts left, and a minute and some change to go. Minute and <laughs> I, four to go. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to <laughs> try to go go for it here. You've had a, a, a lot of electric plays, a lot of uh, deep plays, especially over the top through the passing game. Would not be surprised one bit to see him try to put some more points on the board here going into halftime. They do receive the second half kick. If you if you're the Eagles, you think if you you score here, you score coming out of halftime, you could bury the Trailblazers before this one's even over. They'll go to Miles on first down. Off tackle left side, 25-30, 35-40, brought down out to the 38-yard line. Clock will stop momentarily. Yeah, the clock will stop uh, to get the chain set, but you see Miles here. Yeah, it just bounces it outside. This one was designed to go in between the tackles. This one gets bounced outside and brought down from behind by Augustus Frazier, just short of the 40-yard line. Out first down, they'll swing it to Thurnus, and he is upended immediately at the 35-yard line. JT Anderson there to make the stop. Loses two yards. Clock rolls at 42 seconds to go. And, and this was a perfect form tackle if you're JT Anderson. He had his man uh, covered all the way, goes down, takes out his legs. He wraps him up, brings him down. A perfect open field tackle by JT Anderson. Whistles from the referees. And now they're looking at the clock again. The clock was not supposed to stop after the last play. But I don't know. I, could they be discussing putting more time back on the clock? I don't know why we need to keep putting more time back on the clock. But he's looking at his watch and looking at toward the scoreboard. I mean, certainly if, if there was going to be any stoppage, it would have been two or three plays ago. Operator, please reset to 34 seconds. 34 seconds. I, I just... It will start on my signal. I... I how is that the case? There was a, a complete, a completed pass, and no timeout called. The clock should be rolling. And they're still discussing. Doesn't that, make that's incredible any to me. They to just me. stopped the clock after a complete pass. Thank you. Now they just dropped it back down to 28. <laughs> and now they're going to wind it. Now they got it right. Snap to Holst on second down. Loads up, fires downfield, and incomplete. Old Thurnus got tripped up and fell to the turf. Third down at 12, clock at 19 seconds until halftime. Yeah, Darius Nash was running here side by side with Thurnus. I may have got their legs tangled, or Thurnus may have just tripped over himself, but this pass probably was going to be uncatchable anyway. It was thrown pretty deep downfield. Not sure if Thurnus would have been able to catch that one as the force is a third down and 12 for the Eagles. Here we go, third down, third and 12. 19 seconds remaining, third down and 12. They'll go to Elijah Miles, and he's stopped. And that should be the final play of the fourth quarter, or is Dixie State going to call a timeout? Dixie State is going to call a timeout. I guess you do have the opportunity for maybe a blocked punt. Return punt. Something to return punt. Quirky timeouts brought to you by Dairy Queen. Dixie State cross country update. Billy Hatch finishes fifth in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Championships today. I believe that will earn her first team all RMAC honors which is saying something in, in a conference known for cross country championships. She helps propel Dixie State to a sixth place finish in the RMAC, that's phenomenal. Congratulations to her. They'll move on next week to the South Central Regionals and she'll try to repeat the performance and try to get back to nationals. 11 seconds to go, Zimmerman will punt this away and Dixie State going to bring the house. 
There's the snap. They're not going to bring the house, actually. They're going to try to set up a return for Xavier Smith. Calls a fair catch. And with five seconds remaining, do you say, hey, let's try a Hail Mary and a lateral play? I mean, at this point, you're down three touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. You might as well try I mean, something, maybe see if you can do some sort of a, a trick play or something and, you know, throw it downfield and give your – Give yourself a chance to, to, to come out with a miracle here to end the half. Wow, Dixie State finishes in sixth place in the men's side as well. Kyler Miller, the freshman, is going to earn second team all -Mac, all -R Mac honors. Good for them. Hammond on first down. We'll toss it to C.J. Luongo out of the backfield. And he's across the 25 down to the 29-yard line. I'm... There may have been some contact with the face mask there. They're not going to get the flag. And a very rough first half of play will come to an end with Dixie State trailing 28-7. to The three touchdown lead certainly not completely insurmountable, but Dixie State has its work cut out for it. Drayson, quick hitter thoughts on the first 30 minutes of football. Yeah, not a whole lot went right for trail, the Dixie State Trailblazers on either side of the ball, offensively or defensively. Aside from the very first play of the game that you took 69 yards to the house, there hasn't been a lot of good either way. Your offense has been struggling at times. Cody Willstead has, has not been able to get anything going. You saw Tanner Hammond on a few occasions uh, get some passes completed downfield and move this offense at, at times, but really no consistently offensively, neither through the air nor on the ground. And then defensively, you've just given up way too many plays big plays and broken down coverages and miscommunications that have allowed Shattern to get out to a big 28-7 lead going into halftime. DC State trailing by three touchdowns, 28-7. We will have the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report coming up. We'll break it down for you. Uh, a little bit longer uh, halftime. They're going to extend halftime just a little bit for, uh, for homecoming today. So let's take the full five-minute timeout. We'll come back with the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report on the Trailblazer Football Network. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Five minutes.
We've been here forever. They're about to close the store. Would you just pick something already? I just want to look good, you know? It's season two of Trailblazer Weekly. I just want to make sure I get the right one. Look at all this great stuff they have here at the Dixie State Campus Store. No matter what you choose, you can't go wrong. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm just gonna go with the first one. Catch the season two premiere of Trailblazer Weekly on Wednesday, August 14th at 3 p.m. Presented by the Dixie State Campus Store. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. I take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me. Think I might just stay alive. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium. It is the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. And Dixie State trailing 28 to seven at the half. The Trailblazers coming into this game six and one on the season, five and one in the RMAC. Shadron State came into this game three and four overall, two and four in the RMAC, but that's exactly why I said in the pregame show brought to you by TDS that don't let those records fool you. This is the Shadron State football team that has had some quirky things happen in some games. They've lost two of their losses have come by a combined eight points. Um, and they've been in other games, and they were picked to finish third in the RMAC this season. So everybody, all, every coach in this conference knew there was talent coming back for the Shadron State team. They lead the RMAC in total offense, and we're seeing it on display. Drace, and the thing that's a little concerning is that there doesn't seem like there's been a lot of pushback today. And, and you seem that, you know, and, and it, it shouldn't be a game that's hard to get up for. I mean, your, your playoff hopes are on the line every single week as as Dixie State still has a chance to try to, to win the conference, to share the title and get into the playoffs. I mean, those hopes are on the line every single week when you play, but it just seemed like a pretty stale, I don't want to say a stale effort because they're out there, they're trying, they're working hard, but a very stale performance by the Trailblazers in the first half. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it's unfair to say that. I think it, uh, I think, I think it has gone without notice, without saying that, you know, one, like you mentioned, one team sees like they're really into this game and their hearts are into it, and the, and the Trailblazers, not that their hearts aren't into it, but it just seems like they haven't maybe had the urgency that we've seen them had in prior weeks. Uh, it seems like they may have came out just a little bit flat, which you know could happen. You know, is 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 prone to happen. Uh, on uh, homecoming week, but like you mentioned, you know you're not out of this game. You're only down by three scores. We've obviously seen the Trailblazers put up a ton of second half points early on in the season. That's uh, going to be something that's going to be supreme, extremely crucial uh, in this second half if they're going to want to get back into it. But uh, 
you know, you got to be able to think, hey, you're right in this game, and if you get a few more stops on defense, you had some blown coverages earlier in the first half. If you can shore up those coverages and, and really have your defense dig its heels back in and get back to what it's been doing all season long, I think you're going to have the opportunity to get back into this game if your offense can start clicking. Yeah, that's that's the other big thing with the offense, just not has – not has got its footing so far this game. You got to get back to doing what you were doing earlier on in the season when you were putting up 55 points. Dixie State with 135 yards of total offense in the first half, giving up 242 yards of total offense. The scary thing about that number, Drayson, is it could be even worse. First play from scrimmage, Sejay Luongo goes 69 yards, almost untouched for a touchdown. And you think, okay, here we go. Since that point, Dixie State has only added 66 yards of total offense to the Trailblazers. Without that 69 run, there'd be under 100 yards of total offense for the first half. Now, we don't know what would have happened the rest of that drive. Maybe Dixie State still would have gone down and scored. But the Trailblazers uh, are in a very precarious situation. Like you mentioned, though, there, this game is not over. Uh, if there's been one coach in this conference that we've seen so far to be able to make second half halftime adjustments and, and come out in the second half, it's Coach Paul Peterson. Uh, for one reason or the other, this team has played much better in the second half overall this year uh, than in the first half, and you hope to be able to see that today. It's going to take a lot to overcome a 28-7 to deficit. You might have to see a fumble recover for a, you know, a touchdown or a pick six or a, a punt return, uh, but crazier things have happened in college football, and the Trailblazers will be looking for that kind of second-half effort today. Uh, say Jay Luongo. Five carries, 79 yards. You mentioned the need for maybe a 100-yard rusher. Uh, they're going to need him to uh, to do even more in the second half. However, if they can't get the pass game going effectively, though, they will never get C.J. Luongo or, 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 or Darman Natoa, whoever's trying to run the football. They could have Emmett Smith back there trying to run the football, and it's just not going to happen if they can't get the pass going to complement and open up some of that run game. Uh, as well. So Sage having a great game. Cody Wilstead, though, just two of eight for nine yards passing in the first half. Tanner Hammond, six for eight for 57 yards. Could have been more if not for a, a drop or two late in that, late in that first half. But uh, Dixie State has got to light the spark plug offensively to get back into this football game. Yeah, and like you mentioned, it, there, there just has been really no consistency. I mean, obviously, C.J. Luongo had the big touchdown run of 69 yards, but he's only gained 10 yards since then. Um, I mean, you look at the numbers, he's got five carries for 79 yards, so you think, yeah, that's that's great, but you take away that big run to start the game, and he hasn't really had a whole lot of consistency uh, on the ground this thus far. Uh, Darman Atoa has had two carries and has actually gone backwards. He has a minus three yards on the day. We have not seen Andrew Canelli Robles yet, uh, so really for the Trailblazers rushing. I mean, you haven't seen a whole lot. They're only gaining right now 69 yards of rushing yards on the ground. So just nothing there really for the Trailblazers. And then like you mentioned, you combine that with the, the lack of passing, you know, just not a lot of things going right for Dixie State right now offensively. And, uh, you know, they've got to be able to get get things going both on both the ground game and through the air if you're going to want to have any consistency and get back into this game. No, they're, throwing out, they're throwing out free T-shirts. The fans are getting pretty excited about that. And uh, we actually had someone stand up right in front of our camera. So for you TV and Internet viewers, you've got the nice – view of the back of someone's head but uh, our camera operator kindly asked them to move but uh, Dixie State trailing 28 to 7 and and we've given you some of the numbers uh, Dixie State just 2 of 8 on third down now this says Shadron State just 2 of 8 on third down I wonder if penalties maybe don't count uh, as an official third down conversion that's probably what some of those are. but they're 2 of 2 on fourth down and that's the big thing and, and I think uh, at least one of those fourth down conversions was a touchdown so your scoring summary, Sage Luongo goes 69 yards, and then the next four touchdowns are all passing touchdowns for Shadron State. Dalton Holst with 12, 12 of 19, 128 yards, and four touchdowns. He got four touchdown passes, and it's only halftime. So Dixie State will look to shore some things up uh, defensively and then try to get this offense going in the second half uh, as well. Let's step away. We'll take another, let's call it a three-minute timeout, and then we'll come back and and get you set for the second half. Take a look around the RMAC and see what is going on uh, inside the conference as well. Three-minute timeout and back on the Seven Oaks Jewelers Halftime Report. For over a century, 
Dixie State University has been shaping the trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real world experience mixed with cutting edge technologies and rich traditions, we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. I'm buzzed. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. There is a place where the desert comes alive, where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step, tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. I got you right where I want you. If I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth at Trailblazer Stadium. It's the Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. Five other games on the docket. Dixie State trailing 28-7 at the half. Uh, five other games on the docket this week. Uh, Fort Lewis is at Western Colorado. And we'll try to get you a score for that game as quick as we can. New Mexico Highlands is at South Dakota Mines. And in that game, being played in Rapid City, South Dakota. We are scoreless at the half. And that's Mexico Highlands is 1-5, and, and South Dakota Mines is 1-6. So scoreless battle at the half. Black Hill State is at Colorado Mesa in Grand Junction. Of course, Colorado Mesa just hosted the uh, cross-country championships as well. This, I mean, this score right here does not bode well for Dixie State next week either, Drayson. Uh, Colorado Mesa... 30, 41 to 14 over Black Hill State at the half. You've got a team in Shadron State and a team in Colorado Mesa that have struggled early on, but I think offensively they're starting to figure it out just when Dixie State has to play them. So Colorado Mesa will be here in St. George next week, and uh, you just hope they don't put up numbers like that next week here at Trailblazer Stadium. Adam State is at CSU Pueblo. And right now, the Thunderwolves leading the Grizzlies 14 to nothing, heading into the second quarter. Colorado School of Mines will travel to Azusa Pacific and take on the Cougars a little bit later in non-conference action uh, in the day. Uh, Western Colorado 15 to nothing over Fort Lewis midway through the third quarter. That's your Armac schedule 15 update. 15 to nothing. Am I am I to assume that they hit five field goals in that one, or what, what's the odds scoring there? I mean, 15 to nothing. Obviously, well, they, you would think they five did start field goals. with two field goals. 
So it, it could be. And they were six to nothing. Uh, Dixie State won fifteen to twelve there last year, <laughs> or two years ago. Battle of the kickers. And it Dixie. Well, the Trailblazers missed a PAT in that game. Uh, so there, so there you go. Uh, Trailblazers, if they want any any chance of sharing this conference title, Dixie State has to come back and win this football game. Also, playoff hopes resting on this game and obviously Shadron State trying to play spoiler and this you know counting this game you got four games left and Shadron State has three wins right now if you can win you know three of your next four or four of your next four if you're Shadron State you finish with seven wins and kind of salvage the season so the Eagles still a ton to play for and Dixie State still a ton to play for uh, but uh, uh, things a little dicey right now for Dixie State they'll have to start on defense uh, and try to get a stop and start the momentum that way. Yeah, and you, you almost have to get a stop coming out of the halftime break uh, as the Eagles receive the second half kick. You know, um, their defense has just given up a lot of, you know, too many big plays to start this game. And if you're going to want to have any hope, it's got to start defensively for me. You obviously have your issues with your offense. Hopefully that can come together and come along as the game goes further. But it's got to start defensively. you got to come out. I think... This is a real big statement drive for Dixie State defensively. If you come out and get a three and out and punch them in the mouth early, you know, you can maybe get that momentum back in your favor, back onto your sideline, give this some, this home crowd something to cheer for. They were silent for virtually all of the first half, other than the exception of that 69-yard touchdown run by C.J. Luongo. If you get some, get them something to cheer for, get the momentum back on your side. Here we go, back in play. Opening kickoff of the second half is fielded at the five-yard line, angling near side 20, and then forced out of bounds just across the 20 to the 22-yard line, and that is where the Eagles will take over. That's Lane Jersile, or no, excuse me, not Jersile, that's Ethan Frey on the return. Yeah, and this was a good pursuit by the Dixie State uh, coverage team. Uh, you know, one of the better, uh, for Dixie State, one of the better starting points for the Eagles as far as Dixie State's defense goes. We've seen them start drives up near the 40, the 50, even into Dixie State territory. This one is the furthest back, I think, or close to the furthest back. They'll have started a drive all game long. Hopefully that bodes well for the Trailblazers. By the way, that Western Colorado Fort Lewis game, three Western field goals and then a touchdown with a missed PAT. 15 to nothing. Here's Holst on first down, gives to Miles, and he goes nowhere. And there's some energy and some life that we have not seen until this point. Mark Lopez, Malaki Malaki in on the stop. Yeah, and Miles has been their workhorse all game long. He has been just eating up ground yards all day. And you see Malaki, Malaki grabs him right there at line of scrimmage and does not let him go anywhere. No gain on the play. 14.30 remaining. This crowd trying to get behind the Trailblazers. Second and 10, they've been a second half team. Can they do it again here? Here's Holst looking, fires downfield. Nash is there, incomplete. And a flag will fly and Darius Nash can't believe it. I'm not sure what different he could have done on that play, Drayson. And again, the offensive guy is engaged with Nash as well. It's not just Nash holding him. It's both offensive and defensive guys hand fighting. You have to be able to allow some contact. There's never ever going to be no contact. I'm not sure what else you can do as a defensive back to not draw a flag there. There is no foul for defensive pass interference. The contact has been ruled legal. It will be third down. And that's exactly what I was saying before. I mean, this is this is the exact same this is the exact same play that has happened several times that they've been called today. I mean, they're just both hand fighting. Darius gets his hands around, yeah, he gets his head around. There's there's nothing there. They've called that two or three times already on the Trailblazers. This one, they do the right thing, pick the flag up. Well, they they get together and you know someone from a different vantage point comes over and, and, and helps make that discussion. That, that's a big turning point here now. If Dixie State can force a three and out, get the offense on the field as quick as possible. Third down and 10. Trailblazer faithful trying to urge on this Dixie State team. Had a lot to cheer for this season, but not so much today. On fourth down, timeout. Shadron State with a play clock only at one. Timeout, Shadron State, first charge timeout. So it'll be a timeout brought to you by Dairy Queen. Let's take this one. 14-15 to go on the third. 30-second timeout, and then back with a third down play on the Trailblazer Football Network. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, 
red rocks and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine. Poor and only think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Fourteen fifteen to go, Dixie State. Trailing twenty-eight to seven as we welcome you back into Trailblazer Stadium. Carrick Segmiller and Drayson Ball with you in the broadcast booth. Here at Trailblazer Stadium, and it's a third down and ten with fourteen fifteen to go here in quarter number three, the opening possession of the second half. And this Dixie State bench trying to get the crowd to make some noise. Dalton Holst will have three receivers out to his right, one receiver to his left, and a running back at his left hip. Here he comes, pass across the middle, complete, and tackle made, first down. Dixie State finally got some pressure to him, but he got it out just in time, and they will move the chains on third and ten. Yeah, and it's Tevin Wright. He comes over the middle on a just a drag route over the middle. Holst does a good job of finding him right over the middle. As you see, he gets some separation from JT Anderson, brings that one in, and gets just enough for the first down across the 30 to the 34. 13 to 52 to go here in quarter number three. Dixie State defense unable to get off the field. And it's a 28-7 Shadron State lead. They give to Miles, trying to feel his way around the right side. He's swallowed up. He goes for no gain. Yeah, the second time Miles has been stopped for no gain on this possession. He had 92 yards at halftime. He hasn't gained anything on the first two carries he's had in this second half. A good job there by the Dixie State defense. Tyler Heaton there wrapping him up and bringing him down. 13-18. And ticking here in quarter number three. Second down and 10. Ball at the Shadron State 34-yard line. Two receivers near side. Pistol formation. Miles behind Holst. He rolls out to his left. Fires downfield. And it is caught. But did he get the foot down? Official says yes, he did. It's right again. Tavon Wright having himself a game. First down catch out to the 48-yard line. Yeah, I mean, he's just a tremendous route runner. He can get separation. You see, he runs just a deep out route, about a 15-yard out route, grabs that one, does get down. the push down, foot down before being pushed out of bounds by Darius Nash. 12.45 and ticking here in quarter number three. And the Eagles just trying to suck the life out of this one. You can go on an extended scoring drive on this drive. You can almost end this game. Here's Miles around the right end, and he is to the 20 and steps out of bounds inside the 20, and he's limping. He just he kind of pulled up and, and didn't try to take a hit. He's inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line, and he's going to hobble back down the sideline. You thought for a minute he might break it all the way, and then he kind of pulled up. And he's limping already. He's limping from the 40-yard on. Otherwise, maybe he gets in. Yeah, that one, he just does a good job of, uh, you know, the play was designed to go up the middle. He bounces it to the outside. No one was there for Dixie State as he grabs a big chunky yardage. On a first down, it's Jennings. And he'll dive forward two yards down to the 10-yard line. Second down and 10. There's a first down available inside the yeah. five at about the two, maybe the two-and-a-half-yard line. But still, a situation where if you can force uh, even just a field goal, you got to figure that that would feel like a win for the Dixie State defense after getting up the big play to Miles. Eleven forty remaining in quarter number three. Second down and nine. Holst to Thurnus near side and makes the catch. And he's a little slow to get up down near the five yard line. It was JT Anderson that brought him down. Tevin Wright was the lead blocker. They just kind of get it quickly out of the third. As you see th Wright there gets a good block and then JT Anderson just grabs him by the legs. It looks like he's maybe favoring his right leg or his right kind of thigh there. Not sure exactly what, what it was, but he's uh, able to walk off under his own power. 
11.29 to go in the third. Clock is stopped. It's third down and three ball at the six yard line. And Thurn is gonna take his time walking back off his field. Hope he's okay. And this is big right here. You kind of feel like if, if Shattering State scores another touchdown, this, I mean, it's only early third quarter, but this thing could be over. Holst, end zone, right tipped and incomplete. An opportunity for a tip drill interception, and Dixie State couldn't get it. It'll be fourth down, and they'll send the field goal unit on. And, and that was your chance. And Sir Barnes was right there. He, uh, he was the one that was right there, maybe would have had the option to or the ability to take this one and grab it. You see, just gets a little bit out of his reach, not able to recognize that it. it was a tip drill uh, after that one was deflected. But tar targeting Tavon Wright again, that would have been his third touchdown of the game. And fortunately for the Trailblazers, they were able to knock it down. So be a 23 yard field goal left hash, Colton Dolder. And he makes these in his sleep. That one's up and in. 31 7. Shadron State gets points on the opening drive. It's a four score game now. 11 16 to go. Early third quarter, 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Dude, are you okay? I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Si los amas como para reaprender ecuaciones, para poder enseñárselas, entonces los amas como para visitar en htsa.gov slash protegidos y comprobar que van correctamente abrochados en el asiento trasero del auto. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent... Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. 31-7, Dixie State trailing. 11-16 to go. Certainly not the way you want to see any game go, but homecoming game, big crowd, short kick. Xavier Smith, 10-yard line, far side, at the numbers. 20, trying to find the sideline. 25-30, 35-40 and brought down from behind across the 40-yard line. Horse collar tackle, perhaps, no flags. But Dixie State will start at its own 42-yard line. Yeah, Xavier Smith has done a good job on kick returns so far. He's had a lot of opportunities, unfortunately, for the Trailblazers, but he's done a good job of getting some extra yards on these kickoff returns. Trailblazers are going to have a great field position at their 42-yard line. Got to go down and get something going for your offense if you're going to have a chance in this game. And Tanner Hammond. The lefty, redshirt sophomore, is in at quarterback. What can Hammond bring to this offense? Snap to Tanner. He'll leave it with CJ on first down. Trying to find a hole. He'll get two yards. And then is brought down. Second down and eight. Out to the 44-yard line. Clock rolling at 10.54. And Dixie State's going to have to pretty much play the rest of the game in a two-minute drill. Yeah, you got to have a lot of scores, and you got to have them quickly. So AJ, as you see here, kind of just weaves his way for two yards. Goes over 80 yards on the day. Hammond on second down. Drops back, fires across the middle. Jalen Powell catch midfield. He's at the 40 and upended at the Shadron State 40, 39-yard line. Lifted off the ground, but a first down and positive yardage for the Trailblazers, and they'll hurry back up to the line. And this is what you're going to have to do. Just take what the defense gives you early on in the game. You were trying to throw a lot of deep balls. You were not able to connect on them. If they're going to give you these short underneath routes, you have to be able to take them, execute them, and hopefully you can get yards after the catch. 10-20 to go here in quarter number three. And Dixie State going to get called for a false start. It was not time to snap the ball yet, and you saw both receivers. Uh, Chase Hess, the tight end, flinched as Tanner Hammond was clapping his hands and false start, moved the ball back five yards. Back to the 44-yard line. It is interesting, you mentioned those short passes and watching some of the film, Texas Permian Basin and their scoring drives that they had last week. 
against Shadron State used the short slants and the swing passes and those short passes down the field to their advantage. And that's what Dixie State may have to do here in the second. Hammond trying to evade pressure out to his left, has someone running from behind. He's running 45, 30. And he's down near the first down marker. And that may be why he's out there as well, is his ability to make moves on his feet. His helmet came off, so he's going to have to leave the game. Where did they mark him? Did they say he stepped out of bounds? No, he's two yards shy of the first down. Yeah, gets out to so the 31-yard line. Second and two. It'll be second and two as the Trailblazers don't have a quarterback right now. Cody Wilstead didn't have his helmet on, had to go and find it. Now he jogs onto the field after getting the play from Coach Paul Peterson. But uh, second down and, and two after a big run by uh, Tanner Hammond. He just got out to the left left side, had a defender on his on his heels, but was able to outrun him and get eight yards on first down. Will Stead for CJ. First down yardage. Needed two. Picked up three. The chains move. Will Stead starts jogging off the field, and Coach Paul Peterson says, stay on the field. Yeah, You're Ham our guy. Hammond's... Uh, Hammond's there on the sideline waiting with his, with his helmet on, but, uh, you know, you never know. Maybe you switch between the lefty and the righty. You try to, you know, Just give them a little bit of package, toes, keep yeah. them on their toes and not know what to expect. Willstead, play action. Steps up, fires, end zone. Dantzler's there. Catch made. Touchdown. No, they're going to say incomplete. He's in the end zone. That is not the right call. Of course, I'm saying that from up here, and there he's right next to it. It certainly looked like the right foot was in unless the left foot was already on the back of the, the end zone, Drayson. We're going to get a good look at it here. Uh, Maybe that left foot was on, on the line. I, I digress. Replay always makes me look like a fool. Second down, Willstead rolls out. Has pressure coming from behind, and now he's just going to have to chuck it downfield incomplete. Third down at 10. Trailblazers would love to be able to get seven points here, obviously, but you're at the 27 yard line. If you can, I mean, you're probably within field goal range of, of Baird. I mean, it, you'd be looking at about a 40 yarder from this point, to, uh, or maybe a 40, 44, 43 yarder at this point, but it. You know, obviously, if you can gain five yards or seven yards here, you put yourself in a better position. Yeah, obviously, you'd like to get the first down if you can. Tanner Hammond back in at quarterback. He loads up, fires to Jalen Powell, who made the catch and then dropped it. Now they're going to say incomplete pass. It was broken up by the Shadron State defender. And again, you'd it's be fourth down. I just... I just don't know if three points do anything for you right now. Yeah, I mean you got you got to you got to weigh your you know weigh your options here. Obviously, it'd be a 44 yarder. It's certainly not a, a chip shot by any means for James Baird. Certainly capable of making a long field goal like this. But in this situation, you're down you know four scores. You, you do got to get points yep. on the board, and a field goal at this point is certainly no guarantee. And leave the offense on the field in fourth down. Hammond firing incomplete, but Casey Allison is held to break up a touchdown opportunity, and it'll be a first down for the Trailblazers on the penalty. Yeah, and uh, that one uh, was was an obvious uh, pass interference there. Working on DeAndre Barthol there on that far sideline. Barthol just basically bear hugs Casey Allison. If he doesn't, it's going to be a sure touchdown. Here's the call from the referee. Pass interference, number 31, defense. By rule, the ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. The Trailblazers drive continues. It was kind of interesting to see some of the Shadron State players argue that the ball was uncatchable. And there's a reason it was uncatchable. Yeah, you see Barthol I just mean, grabs. I mean, you see it, right? Just there. a big bear hug. There's his. a reason that the ball fell just a few yards ahead of Casey Allison. Dixie State into the true by Hilton red zone. Got to find the end zone. Hammond, play action, rolls out to his right. Looking, looking, fires incomplete. Trying to find Casey Allison. Yeah, that one was uh, that one's an odd uh, throw for uh, Hammond as he's the left-hander rolling out to his right. Had to kind of turn and throw that one back across his body, try to get enough on it to get it there to Allison, but it was just maybe a little bit too close for him as he kind of put a lot of zip on this one. And see here, he's waiting, waiting, trying to see if something opens up. Here comes Allison into his vision, just can't connect with him. 
Second down and 10. Trailblazers trying to find the end zone for the second time today. Hammond on second down. He's going to pull it down and run. And he's met immediately. Linebacker was there. Noah Kerchal. I hope I'm saying that name right. It's not on the pronunciation guide. Apologize if it's not saying it right. Hey, so he just grabs him up, gets a you know, a good form tackle there, wraps him out, doesn't allow Hammond to get away from him as he uh, picks up three three yards, forcing a third down and seven. Third and seven ball at the Shadron State 16-yard line. 7.55 to go. Snap to Hammond. Looks, fires, Pat's caught. Dantzler, five-yard line. Trying to make a man miss. He's in. Touchdown. 16-yard pitch and catch from Tanner Hammond to Dewan Dantzler. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Tanner Hammond's first touchdown pass in a Trailblazer uniform. Yeah, and this one was a beautiful route concept. You had trips receivers to the right-hand side. Dewan Dantzler finds some open space and beats his man. You see there, wide open, makes one guy miss there around the five-yard line and gets into the end zone just what the Trailblazers needed if they want to get back into this one. 7.46 remaining. The snap, the kick is up. James Barrett says, finally, I get to do something. The Trailblazers trailing 31-14, 7.46 to go in the third. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Where do you find the titans of classical music in St. George? Classical music on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. Where do you find the legends of jazz? Evenings on Radio St. George, 100.3 FM. There is a place where looking out means looking in. Where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever. Where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered. Where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Juan Dantzler making that touchdown catch, and the Trailblazers within 31-14. Ensuing kickoff into the end zone, and touched. He touched the football. That should be a live football, no? Guess not. I guess he didn't touch it. I think if you should, I think you make an attempt, I think it should should count I as mean, you, you touching it. You, if you go up there and make it look like you're that would have helped the catch State it. score yeah. without any time coming off the clock at all. Let's We're going to see. Uh, I think it went right over his arm. Right up. I think it just, he took the wrong angle at it, and that's why he missed it. Seven forty-six to go as Drayson and I get our PA shout out by Roger Christensen, the PA announcer here at Dixie State. 31-14, Dixie State going to try to dial up a quick stop now. Holst. On first down, loads up, looking for his man, and isn't complete. Augustus Frazier there in coverage, and miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. Wright was running a slant, or more of a post, toward the goal post, and, and Hulse threw it toward the sideline, incomplete. Yeah, I think that's just one of those option routes. You give the receiver the option based on what the coverage is doing. This one, Wright sees uh, Augustus Frazier on the sidelines, and he breaks to the middle of the field. Hulse thought he was gonna go to the outside, throws it there to the sideline, and that's uh, that one goes incomplete. Well, uh, right first was down. open. If he puts the ball where it needs to be, it might have gone for another touchdown. Second down and 10. 
They're going to go to Priest Jennings, and he is quick, and he breaks tackles free across the 30, 35, and tackled out of bounds across the 35. You talked earlier in the game, Drayson, about how quick he is, and you got to see as quick small sample of that speed. Yeah, he's lightning quick. If he gets to the outside, you can just about forget it. A small frame, 5'8", 190 uh, pound running back out of Stockton, California. He's a, a very fast and electric runner. And, you know, obviously with the, the one-two punch they've had so far today with Elijah Miles and Priest Jennings, uh, he just gives you a different look running outside the tackles. 7-14 and ticking here in quarter number three. DC State within 31-14. Jennings is gonna be tackled in the backfield this time, but it takes half the Dixie State defense to get him down. He's just that fast. He'll lose four yards on the play. It'll be second down and 14. Yeah, Malaki, Malaki was there. Looks like Aaron Simpson in there on the tackle as well. But this one, you see he wanted to go up the middle, was forced to bounce to the outside. That gave the Trailblazers defense enough time to get good pursuit and bring him down for a loss of a couple yards, forcing down a second and 14. Second and 14, Dixie State with two receivers split out to the left. Clock rolling, 6.30 here in quarter number three. Holst will drop it inside, it's incomplete. Trailblazers finally got enough pressure in there to make him feel a little bit uncomfortable. He had to get rid of it early and it's a third down and long situation with the clock stop. Yeah, and uh, this pressure just came right up the middle. You had a stunt there, Tyler Heaton as well as Mark Lopez. One went to the outside, one came back into the inside, and that's where the pressure came from, was right up the gut, forcing Holst to get rid of this one before he wanted to, throw it just into the ground, basically a throwaway, uh, basically, and forces a third down and 14. Third and 14, these are the kind that you cannot give up at this situation in the game. Trips to the near side for Holst. Looks left, steps up, fires mid, wide open middle of the field, Tavon Wright. Catch midfield, and he's free. 20, 15, still on his feet, juking left and right and brought down inside the 10. Yeah, Tavon Wright working on Darius Nash, and it just gets some separation. I mean, Tavon Wright, he's had a tremendous game. He's uh, absolutely electric. He's the favorite target of Dalton Holst. You see, he finds him over the middle there. No Dixie State defenders, even in your screen, as Wright just continues to stay on his feet. Stiff arms Darius Nash there at the end to pick up about 10 more extra yards. Finally brought down by Samote Lokutui, but a huge gain for the Eagles on a big third down of 14. First and goal from the five yard line. And they'll hand off to Miles. And he'll be brought down after a pickup of two down to the three. Second and goal from the three, 5.35 to go. I'll tell you, you talk about how good of a game uh, Tavon Wright's having. And he's having a great game, but he hasn't had to make a single catch in coverage. All of his catches, at least the big ones, have been wide open. And, and, like I mentioned, and, and it's something that they're doing to confuse this Dixie State defense, but he hasn't had to make a single contested catch in this football game. And let's not take anything away from Wright. He's a great no, route runner as absolutely. well. And he, he does a good job of getting finding into space, and he's extremely athletic and fast. Second and goal, and Miles is hit. He'll lose three yards back to the six-yard line. Third and goal from the six. Yeah, this one, uh, just good job by the Dixie State defensive line is there able to get pressure right up the middle and bring him down is Sir Barnes behind the line of scrimmage. Going back to Tavon Wright, uh, just quickly to mention, already seven receptions up 158 yards on the day. We know he's got two touchdowns already. He's been a huge part of their offense going over 150 yards now of total receiving yards. Third down and goal from the six. You've got Brandon Fullerton and Tavon right out to the left. Holst is looking left, fires middle of the end zone, incomplete, and Thurness was wide open. But he threw it over his head and out of the back of the end zone, and here comes the field goal unit. Yeah. Dixie State 
Thurman just got behind the defense and was wide <laughs> open. But that one, uh, you know, that's the pass you want him to throw. It is You had coverage up about halfway through the end zone, and the only way they're going to complete that pass is if it's kind of a little touch pass and gets over the defense. That one just thrown a little bit too tall. And the reason it was thrown like that, because the Trailblazers' coverage was up closer to the offensive line of scrimmage, forcing that one to go high. 23-yard field goal straight away is up and in for Dolder. 34-14. Dixie State trailing. 4-14 to go in the third. We'll take a 60-second timeout. Come back on the Trailblazer Football Network. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. I got you right where I want you. I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. 4.14 to go. And the ensuing kickoff is fielded by Dewan Dantzler, and he'll kneel it two yards deep in the end zone. Chadron State, 34, Dixie State 14. And, and the tough part about that drive, Drayson, is that Dixie State had a, a third and, and a long situation defensively that you just couldn't quite get out of. And another wide open receiver across the middle kept that drive alive. You hold them to a field goal. But you still trail 34 14. And how many times have the Trailblazers had a situation like that on a third down and long and just not been able to get their defense off the field? It's really come back to bite them, especially on a couple of fourth down conversions, even that they haven't been able to get stops on to, to get their offense back onto the field. Tanner Hammond, your quarterback, read option. He'll keep it, and a good read by the Shadron State defense. They're able to snuff it out and bring him down after a minimal pickup, caught two yards yep. after the 27. Fakes this one to Luongo, and good thing he did because Luongo was dead to rights in the backfield. Had he given it to him, he keeps it. At least gets positive yardage to the 27-yard line. It'll force a second down and eight. On second down, play action. And they'll dump it to Chase Hess, the tight end. Across the 35, avoids the defender, 40. Out to the 45, 50, dragging defenders into Shadron State territory. You just run the little screen pass with the tight end. I like that play. Yeah, just something simple. Get uh, Hammond and Hess out into open space. He only uh, maybe a three or four yard pass downfield, but Hess has a lot of green grass to run. A nice little no block there by Jalen Powell. And then Hess, some fancy footwork down the <laughs> sidelines to get a few more yards. Tanner Hammond, slant route inside. Dantzler makes the catch at the 40, and will get inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Just the 10 yards needed for another first down, brought to you by Alani Boys Barbecue. And this was a similar play to the touchdown to Dantzler on the last possession. Bunch, bunch formation to the right, three men on the right side of the, of the line. Hess and Jalen Powell both ran verticals, and Dantzler came underneath on a five-yard in route and up for the first down. First and 10 from the 38. Hammond will leave it with Sajay. Sage to the 35, and he is brought down across the 35, down to the 33-yard line, being helped along by his defensive lineman, Tima Malie Tulua, who was there to help him along the way. And now we've got a Dixie State offensive lineman down. And it doesn't look good. We're going to have an injury timeout. 2.50 remaining here in quarter number three. We'll take the injury timeout, 30-second timeout, and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. For over a century, Dixie State University has been shaping the Trailblazers of tomorrow by providing a culture of active learning, active life. With a paradigm of real-world experience mixed with cutting-edge technologies and rich traditions, 
we provide one of the most affordable educations in the West set against the most stunning backdrop on the planet. Injured player is Siotami Haunga being helped off the field. And I said it was Malie Tulua that was kind of helping Seiji along, but I think it was actually Haunga. And he ends up at the bottom of that pile and helped off by Ryan Harris and Bruno Silva, the great Dixie State trainers. Here we go, second down and five. Ball at the Shadron State 33-yard line, 2.45 to go in the third. Hammond steps back. Now he's going to pull it down and run. Free across the 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Tanner Hammond. 33-yard touchdown run, and that's why he's in there. Folks, we've got a game, 34-20, with 2.33 to go in the third. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, one thing that Tanner Hammond offers you that Cody Wilstead does not is he's able to move a little bit better on his feet. He steps up into the pocket, reads that no one is open downfield. He tucks it and runs. He's very flight of foot. Uh, and he is able to get out into open space and then gets behind the Dixie State, or, or excuse me, behind the Eagles secondary. You see here, makes a couple of guys miss and then squeezes in between a couple of tackles there and goes all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. PAT off the upright and through for James Baird. Off the left upright and through. And Dixie State trails by 13, 34, 21, 233 to go on the third. Don't go anywhere. Here come the Trailblazers. 60 second timeout and back. I'm Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in, because for 75 years, Smokey only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. Meanwhile, the song was wrong. We did start the fire. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. There is a place where the sun doesn't hide in the winter, where the greens stay green and the crimson canyons still glow. There is a place where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where we drive for show, putt for dough, and settle the score with another round. There is a place. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium. Ensuing kickoff, high kick, fielded at the eight yard line. Returner, 25-30. And brought down across the 35 to the 36 yard line of Shadron State. The Dixie State defense will have an opportunity with 2.26 to go in the third to try to force a three and out and get this offense back out onto the field. Yeah, and you need to get a stop here. You know, if you want to have any chance to win this one, I don't think you can give up any more points at this stage of the game. You're down only two scores. Your defense has to be better at getting off the field when they get the opportunity on third downs. 2.26 to go in the third. And now if you're Shadron State, you, you run into that Fine line between trying to stay aggressive and running your offense and then getting too conservative. Snap to Holes. He'll pitch it out to the left to Miles, and he's got a head of steam, and he's out for a nine-yard gain and a shoestring tackle may have saved, if not a touchdown, a big gainer into Dixie State territory. Yeah, and that was uh, Loveless Rufus who, who brought him down by his, uh, by his ankles there. Basically, if he cuts that one back, he's got the far sideline. And that one may go for six if you're not careful. Good tackle there in the open field by Rufus. Two minutes remaining here in quarter number three. Dixie State within two scores, 34-21. And a run. And he's going to did he lose a yard, at least no gain. It'll be third down and one. Maybe going to give him loss of yard. Maybe a loss of one. Kind of maybe a loss of a half yard. Third down and a yard and a half. Move back a little bit, not a full yard back. So this is big here. Third down and one. Call it a long one. Trailblazers haven't had a sack all game. Would be a great time for one right here. It'll be interesting to see. Do they run or do they try to throw here? They've had success through the air on third down. I expect them to do the same thing here. Holst. 
to Miles, and he's got the first down. There was no question where they were going with that one. Needed just one, he picked up four on the play, and a first down for Shadron State. 108 remaining in the third. And once again, the Trailblazers failed to get off the field on third down. Their defense not able to stop Miles short of the first down. Still inside their own territory, but the Eagles now moving after picking up a first down on their uh, on this this series. Lock rolling, 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and this should be the last play of this quarter. Shadron State will be in no hurry. They'll go to Priest Jennings. He bounces off the defensive line, and he's swallowed up. Goes nowhere. They're going to give him a yard, or maybe half maybe yard. no half yard. So technically no gain. It'll be third down, second down and ten still. And that'll do it. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Shadron State saying, we're not going to run any more plays. And this is the one, if you're a referee, you love uh, when, the, when the quarter ends at this point of the field. You're right at the 50-yard line or just, just <laughs> maybe just move it uh, about two inches from the 50-yard yep. line. You move it about six inches to the other side of the field. <laughs> and you don't have to run the length of it. A lot of times you end it, you'll end you it on to the 10-yard line. There. you got to run the length of the field to get uh, on the other side. But uh, this one... Just a short little jog. Three quarters of play in the books, but we've got a game on our hands at Trailblazer Stadium. 34-21, Dixie State trailing. Let's take uh, just a 30-second timeout, a 30, and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. All right, Monroe. You ready? Monroe. Here we go, the butterfly. Fifteen minutes up on the fourth quarter clock. The teams will change directions. Dixie State in the all red uniforms. We'll be moving right to left in quarter number four after three quarters of play. Dixie State still being outgained 398 to 265. Second down and nine for Holst and the Eagles. Snap to Holst, he'll pitch it out left to Miles. He breaks one tackle and will gain four yards down to the 46 yard line. And it will be third down and five. And once again, you're at that point of the field where you know this could be two down territory for the Eagles. They've had success on third and fourth down for, for that matter all through the game. You got to at least force them here into a fourth down and force them into a situation where they either have to punt or go for it. You got to get this third down stop if you want to have a chance of getting back into this one. Third down and five. Holst, play action, pass across the middle, and it is caught. It's right again, and he is absolutely destroyed by Aaron Simpson, but he pops right back up. And that's the dangers you have thrown over the middle. This one just a quick play action slant to right, and he is met immediately by Aaron Simpson. Those are the dangers you get thrown over the middle, and uh, Aaron Simpson making his presence known, saying, hey, if you come over across the middle, that's what you're going to get. 13.55 remaining in regulation. Holst leaves with Miles, and he goes nowhere. Loses a yard. Back to the 36-yard line. Shadron State content, though, to continue to chew clock. Yeah, and Miles, uh, you know, they've, they've done a better job on Miles in this second half. He, he's up over 150 yards, but had 93 yards at halftime. Uh, obviously, you know, he's had a good game on the ground, but save for, I think, one really big run in this second half, the Trailblazers have done a good job to limit him offensively. Snap to Holst on second down. Passing situation to the end zone. It is tipped and incomplete. 
Tavon Wright wants a pass interference flag. He's not going to get it. <laughs> Everyone wearing red in the stadium was hoping for an interception on that play, Drayson, but it was not to be. Yeah, this one was thrown into double coverage, and uh, they're trying to find Wright again over the middle, and why not? He's had a very, very good day. You see Holtz gets hit as he's thrown, thrown into double coverage. There's Simote Lokutui over the top, and Aaron Simpson underneath in coverage for Wright. Good coverage once again, forcing a third down. How many times do we got to say it? Third down for the Trailblazers defense. He got to get a stop here. 13.05 remaining in the fourth. Clock is stopped. Here's Holst on third and 11. Pressure comes, will fire downfield, and it is incomplete. No flags, good coverage by Aaron Simpson in the end zone. Yeah, this one, the ball just was underthrown. Tavon Wright went to the end zone. He got about two or three yards deep in the end zone, but this one just did not have enough legs on it to see there. This one's gonna fall well short at about, just about the goal line as Wright was working his way into the end zone and it'll force a punt for Dixie State. We said it a lot. They finally force a third down stop. It'll force a punt for Shadron State. And the Trailblazers will get it back with just under 13 to go, down two scores. Zimmerman standing at the 50-yard line, right at midfield. will try to pin Dixie State inside the 10. Dixie State only brings one. And Xavier Smith going to let that ball bounce into the end zone. And Dixie State will have it at the 20-yard line with 12.50 to go. And with how quickly Dixie State can score at times, Drayson. There is still a glimmer of hope. Yeah, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you're the Trailblazers, you've, you've played very well defensively in the second half. You've only given up six points to the Eagles. You've scored two touchdowns offensively. you got to be able to go down. If you get one more, then anything can happen. Any turnover, fumble, interception, muffed punt, you give yourself an opportunity to get within one score. A touchdown in that point would take the lead, and then you're, you're obviously at that point, you know, you just do whatever you can to try to win this game. You got to get this possession going. 12, and a half, 12 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this one. Tanner Hammond is your quarterback still, and boy, would he have a story to tell if he could lead the Trailblazers to a victory here. Still a ton of work to be done. Trailing by 13, 12.50 to go. Hammond on first down. Rose, and that should be incomplete. One hopped into the arms of Casey Allison. And that's one thing you give up when you have Hammond out there versus Cody Wilstead. There's just not the same amount of zing. Yeah, that's a long on, on that throw. That's a long it's throw a long across pass. the field. Yeah, to the right from the right hash all the way outside from the left hash, the near sideline. It is a long throw, and Wilstead does have the better arm between the two. Tanner Hammond does have the better feet, so that's something you got to surrender. Second and ten, Hammond across the middle, incomplete, and nearly intercepted on the tip. Looking for Jalen Powell, just trying to dump it center of the field and off of Powell's hands and incomplete. How many times have we seen that today? Off of a receiver's hands and incomplete. Yeah, that one was put right on the money. I mean, you can't. He, he you, had room to run, and too. You couldn't, even, you couldn't even walk it up and place it in a better spot for Jalen Powell. It's the third drop uh, thus far in the game for the Trailblazers. That one you got to be able to have, especially when you're down two touchdowns. Third down and 10 for Dixie State. Got to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. Got to convert this third down. Hammond loads up across the middle. CJ makes the catch, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Needed 10, picked up eight. It'll be fourth down and two out to the 28-yard line. And Trailblazers might be in a situation where you need to go for it. Obviously, a, a, a turnover on downs in this point of the field would almost be a back breaker. You're, you're basically almost in field goal territory for the Eagles and the Trailblazers are going to take a timeout and talk this one over, rightly so, a very important play on this one. Now, I would have liked, before taking that timeout, at least to go and, and line it up and try to try to draw the defense off sides, but they will take the timeout. Timeout's brought to you by Dairy Queen. We'll take it as well. Quick 30-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps! Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope.
12-16 to go in the fourth quarter. Hunter Wood is out in the huddle right now. Looks like you've got the special teams unit out. They are going to punt. I just, I don't think you can afford to, to not convert here. Yeah, I think you've got to extend the game. At this point, you can't, you know, a, 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 a turnover on downs at this spot, you get three points, then it's three scores. You cannot shoot yourself in the foot that in that situation. You've got to be able to extend the game and hope you can make plays on your defense. So Wood to punt from his own 15-yard line, and Thurnus standing back near his own 35. And he drops the football, and he's going to be tackled at the 15-yard line. Hunter Wood dropped the snap and is tackled at the 15, and that will probably seal the deal. Yeah, I mean, that one, just no excuse for that one. I mean, that one hits him right at the hands, right at the numbers. I mean, not sure exactly what happened there, but that one's just I, it, <laughs> hard, hard to explain on that one. Just hits him right in the you know, hands. Maybe just took his eyes off for just a second. It is Halloween, and it is homecoming. And when you look at the past of this Dixie State football program in Division Two, you're seeing some ghosts of the past make an appearance on homecoming. On first down, it's Miles. Plunging ahead down to the 12-yard line of Dixie State. Those are things that we saw happen more frequently than, than we'd like to remember in the not too distant past. Yeah, Miles goes up the middle here. He gets a couple of yards. You know, if you're the trouble is right now, I misspoke earlier. If I said they got a, a field goal, it'd be a three-score game. It would still technically be a two-score game with two touchdowns and two converted extra point, a uh, two point conversion, excuse me. Uh, but at this point of the game, you gotta see if you're the defense, gotta force a turnover. Punch that ball out, see if you can't get it on the ground or maybe get an interception if they do throw it here. Holst. Hands off to Miles. He'll pick up the first down inside the five, down to the four. First and goal from the four. And unfortunately, we're starting to see some people head for the exits. And Miles just runs downhill on this one, just gets out and uh, into the Dixie State secondary and just lowers ahead and gets the first down for the Eagles and inside the five yard line now, first and goal for uh, Shadron State. Ten fifty two to go. First and goal from the four. Touchdown. Miles into the end zone, and that should just about seal the deal. Yeah, 40 to 21, 10.45 to go in the first, fourth, I mean. And when you look back on this game for Dixie State, I mean, certainly not over yet, 12, 10, 50, 10 45 remaining in this one. Uh, but when you look back on this one, it's going to come down to two guys, Tavon Wright and Elijah Murray. Have, Elijah Miles, excuse me, have just been extremely productive uh, for today for the Eagles. Miles punches in. The touchdown, uh, 33 attempts, 166 yards, four miles, and then, of course, Tevin Wright, eight receptions, 168 yards, and two touchdowns for the Eagles. Now, I don't even think they kicked the PAT yet. I think Shadron State called a timeout. So we'll keep it right here throughout the timeout. I'm not sure why you need a timeout. Kind of bizarre. The only thing Before I can think a PAT of attempt. is you're, you're probably going to come out and go for two here to make it a three touchdown game, uh, 42 to 21. That would be 21 points and and three yeah. touchdowns and the extra points. So if you go for one, obviously there's a chance if you score three touchdowns and get the extra point on all of them, you take the uh, you take the lead. Um, so maybe just discussing the the two point conversion at this point in the game. Ten forty five remaining and feeling we haven't felt since really early on in the season. A little bit of disappointment. A little bit of shock, maybe. I think would even be a better word. Like you said, this game's still not over, but Dixie State moving into the heart of its schedule, and it started last week at Western Colorado. Now a tough game this week, and doesn't get any easier against Colorado Mesa the week after, and the week after that against Colorado School of Mines. 
They are going to go for two. Holst fumbles the snap. Will fire immediately to the end zone. It's tipped and incomplete. A failed conversion. And now Dixie State trails 40 to 21. 10.45 to go. We take a 60-second timeout. Come back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, sunshine pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. I got you right where I want you. If I make this one, it's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. 10.45 remaining. Xavier Smith will take the ensuing kickoff at the goal line near side. Smith, middle of the field, spins out of a tackle, 15-yard line, and then is brought down at the 17-yard line. Thought that's he, where Dixie State will take over. Thought he may have been able to get out of a tackle there, had some open field in front of him, had he been able to get out of that shoestring tackle there, just was wrapped up from behind to stop him up just enough for a host of Eagles to bring him down. Halftime. Out of state only trailing CSU Pueblo 21-12 in Pueblo. And Adam State has thrown five interceptions already in that football game. And wow. only trail 21-12. State has some tough games ahead of it on its final three games of the year after this one. Tanner Hammond back out to play quarterback. And if you're Dixie State, you got to move quick, quick, quick now. Hammond across the middle, and it is picked off. Okay, trying to find Chase Hess coming over the middle. Um, Hammond had a had an underneath route, had Jalen Powell streaking across the middle. They're going to get together and see if it was actually caught or whether they thought it was incomplete. They do agree that it was caught. It was close. But it looked like the right call yeah. to me. It oh, looked yeah. like he, he, looked got like he caught it. But like I was saying earlier, Jalen Powell was uh, was coming across the middle just underneath, about four or five yards downfield is all. You see him go across. That was Casey Allison, excuse me. And then he lets to go downfield to try got to it. find Chase Hess and just intercepted there by Tyree Fryer. Trailblazer's second turnover of the game and brings this Eagles, Eagle offense back out onto the field. Shadron State has now scored 40 or more in each of the last three games. An offense that is starting to play its best football at the right time of the year. Holst looking, has a man. Thurnus is open, and it's tipped and incomplete. And a flag is going to be thrown, and I'm wondering if that's going to go against Thurnus for unnecessary roughness. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, it looks like what it's going to be. Because it was tipped, and Thurnus got frustrated and grabbed the Dixie State defender and body slammed him to the ground. I would not be surprised if that's what that is. You're going to see it right here. Personal foul. Face mask, number 25, offense. 15-yard penalty remains first down. I guess he got a hand in the face mask. And either way, there was something, something that didn't look there right. There was something that didn't look right in, in the end of that play. And I'm not sure that's really necessary when you have a 40 to 21 lead late in the game. I guess you still get, you know, your emotions still get the best of you. You want to, I don't know, maybe keep running the score up. Frustrated you didn't make a touchdown catch. I don't know. That moves Shadron State back into its own territory, back to the 47 yard line. First and 25. Clock stopped at 10 21. They'll pitch it to Miles out to the left, and he'll pick up just one yard that time. But credit to the Shadron State coaching staff for kind of 
making an adjustment. Dixie State adjusted and has started to slow Miles down in the second half. So what did they counter with their own adjustment? And they're pitching it straight to the left and letting Miles kind of get some some running room that way instead of just trying to run him traditionally off tackle or up the middle. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, they've they've done that adjustment. Uh, you know, early in the game he was just pounding up the middle and he's had a lot of success throughout the game. But the second half has been a bit of a different story. I think he had one big run in the second half, if I remember correctly, early on in that third quarter. But so far, other than that run, they've done a really good job of limiting his his yards on the ground. Delay of game going to be called against Shadron State. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Well, now it's second and 29. 29. <laughs> I mean, I know you want to run the clock out, but well, I mean, you if they can't, you can't. <laughs> and it's been that kind of day for the Trailblazers that I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to convert <laughs> if this they one. Convert this. Oh boy. Holst fires right, makes the catch. Is tackled across midfield to the 49-yard line of Dixie State, a gain of six. It'll be third down and 23. JT Anderson, Alex Lilliard in to make the tackle, trying to strip the ball and get something going for, for Dixie State. As you see here, Anderson kind of just grabs him first, waits for uh, Lilliard. They're trying to pull the ball out, but good job credit to Tavon Wright. Gets both hands over the ball to cover it and keep possession of it. Clock stopped, 8.48 to go here in quarter number four. Snap to Holst, read option, he's going to keep it, and he's going down for the first time today. Shadron State coach is unhappy with the fact that the referees allowed Dixie State pile to bring Holst to the ground after the whistle started ringing out. But when you've got that much momentum going, it's hard to stop it all. Met first by uh, Dylan Hendrickson. Mitch Jacobs was there. Lenandre Schwally was there as well. Three trailblazers bring him down, and it'll force a punt so, for the Eagles. Let's see. Punt, punt return for a touchdown. Onside kick. I don't think Inters you're gonna go on six. I don't think you gotta go onside kick. kick this early. I think you can, <laughs> if you score here, I think you can uh, you can kick it away. And that's a botched punt, well outside, out of bounds, and that's gonna go and be marked out of bounds. Where are they marking it? Past the forty. At the forty. At the forty. At the forty. Right at the forty. They're gonna mark it at the forty yard line. That'll be immediate timeout. Dixie State trailing 40 to 21. 90 second timeout and back to the Trouble Bat uh, Football Network. I got you right where I want you. I make this one. It's over. I win. No pressure. Bring it. We may not always play good. But when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. So far it's okay. It's not my favorite, but it's okay for the price. So. 40 to 21 with possession at its own 40. Hammond gets rid of it, and it is tipped and nearly intercepted. Incomplete. Goodness gracious. 
Defensive end Calder Forsella was engaged in, in a block, and Hammond threw it, and he nearly grabbed a one-hand interception. Yeah, I'm not sure where this play was going. I mean, that that one, I don't even see you. It was designed to be set up a screen, but I think maybe, honestly, I think Tanner Hammond thought he saw Luongo, but he it was actually the, the blocker that he, that he thought he saw that was Luongo. That's where he threw it right into the back of his own blocker. Hammond on second down, loads up, fires across the middle. Dantzler catch, 25-20, tackle from behind inside the 15 down near the 10-yard line. And the chains will move. And Dixie State going to hustle back up to the to the line inside the true by Hilton red zone. Yeah, and that was, soft with the lefty showing some arm on that throw. And that was the best pass we've seen from him all day, staying poised, stepping up into the pocket, finding Dantzler on a seam route down the middle. Beautiful ball by Hammond. Hammond flushed out to his left, and he's brought down. 7.08 yeah. to go in the fourth. Joey Gale on that one. Guile, excuse me, Joey Guile on that one. Just pocket collapsing, and... Hammond not able to see that one coming from the left side. He was looking to his right. And Guile brings him down for a loss of about not eight. Tanner, short arms it incomplete. Trying to fire to the far sideline at Dewan Dantzler. And again, we talked about it before. One thing you, you, you surrender with Hammond is a little bit of arm strength between him and Willstead. This one, once again, from the left hash all the way to the right sideline. This one just does not have enough uh, enough energy on it to get over there to the far sideline to Dantzler. Had, a man op had him open, it would have been about a six or seven yard catch and obviously had some room to run behind him, but just not able to get it there and skips that one up to him. They're down at 18. Play action, Hammond across the middle, dumps it to Malcolm Ross Turner, 10. And then brought down inside the 10, short of the first down marker. You gotta go for it. You're gonna be about three yards shy of the first down. Down to the eight yard line. Yeah, crossing routes by the Trailblazers, Malcolm Ross Turner comes underneath on a crossing route and Hammond does a good job finding him, leading him and giving him some room to run. A good pickup on third down to set up a fourth and about four. Got to have this one, obviously. You know, stranger things have happened for this Dixie State team. Got to have this one if you want to have any chance. Fourth and four. Play action. Throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Darman Natoa. On a fourth down. And it's not quite over yet. 40 to 27. Dixie State within 13 again. 6.03 to go on the fourth. Yeah, well-designed play here. You, you, you force the play action, bring out two running backs, and then send Darman and Toa out there into the flat. Everyone thinks it's going to be a run. They crash hard behind the line of scrimmage, and then you just dump it out to no Toa there near the pylon. He gets into the end zone as the Trailblazers now look like they're going to go for two. Trailing by 13 at this point. I mean, I guess you chase any points you can get now at this point. If Hammond, two-point conversion, tried to the sideline, incomplete. Jalen Powell was there, got his hands on it, and couldn't haul it in. Yeah, that one just a little bit too high for Xavier Smith, or Jalen Powell, excuse me. Jalen Powell, not the, not the tallest of receivers. He's got definitely, his hands on it, though. Definitely a vertical player, but just standing at 5'10", that one thrown just out of his reach. But that one's like you mentioned, you know, doesn't necessarily have to have that have that one. You're still down two touchdowns. And uh, that one would have just been a bonus. 6.03 to go. Dixie State trailing 40 to 27. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout, just a 30, and come back on the Trailblazer of Football Network. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You. Your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Six oh three to go. Dixie State trailing forty to twenty seven. 
And we've got the hands team on the field. Trailblazers are going to attempt an onside kick. The band is still playing. They need to stop. There they go. Baird kicks it right to Fullerton. And Shadron will have it inside the 50 at the Dixie State 47-yard line. Yeah, that Didn't one, quite get high enough. Yeah, it wasn't the, wasn't the greatest one. You, you want to have that one bounce twice. Obviously, you kick it off the tee. It bounces right off the tee. And then you want it to take another bounce and bounce up into the air. That one just got a little bit too much on it. Didn't actually come down for the second bounce. And Fullerton's there to bring it in. But still, again, you know, you force a three and out. You're, you're not in field goal range. If you don't give up any yards at this point, it, it would be, uh, you know, odd for them to go for it on fourth down at this point in the game. You get three stops right here, and you don't let them get too many yards. You never know. You have a chance. First down, here's Miles up the middle. And he'll pick up three yards, second down and seven. You're trailing by 13, Drayson. That's two touchdowns, right? Right. Kind of brings to light the, uh, the Willstead fumble in the first quarter. Led to a touchdown. The fumbled punt led to a touchdown here in the fourth quarter. At this point in the game, without those two touchdowns, you're looking at a totally different ball game, considering everything else that's gone wrong for Dixie State. Second down and seven, ball at the 44-yard line, 5.22 to go. Dixie State has two timeouts remaining. They go to Miles, and he will go for no gain. Third down and seven upcoming for Shadron State. And... Whistles. Dixie State going to take a timeout with 5.12 remaining. Interesting decision to take the timeout there. Obviously, you got to use them at some point. You know, and Shattered's, of course, content to just run this ball and, you know, see if they can just burn the clock at this point in the game. But, uh, you know, obviously, you got to have two scores for Dixie State. You got to use them at some point. But, uh, I think you it, know, the, the bigger thing right now is you got to be able to get off the field. Third down and seven, you, you've had struggles all day getting off the field. You have had a few successful uh, third downs that you've been able to stop them, and that's really the bigger key right now other than the clock is one thing. The other thing is being able to get off the field. You, know, you, can't, you can't blame anything on, on the clock or the timeouts if you can't get off the field in the first place. 5.12 to go. We keep it right here. Timeouts are brought to you by Dairy Queen. Dixie State trailing 40 to 27, 5-12 to go. You know, one thing to think about is third and seven, you know, at least by calling the timeout for Shadron into possibly throwing the ball and incomplete, then maybe the clock stopped on fourth down again. But of course, when we see Shadron pass on third down, it's, you know, Par for the course today would be a 44-yard touchdown on this play. Yeah, they've been successful passing seven. through the air so, so on any down so if far. We had a, if we had a telestrator on our TV, right, we'd find Tav Tavon Wright, and we'd circle him and say, watch for him to catch a ball right across the middle and go for a touchdown. Dixie State going to bring the house, and they'll dump it to the tight end. who makes the catch and is brought down. After a pickup of two yards, it'll be fourth down and five. What does Shadron State do here? It's down to the Dixie State 42-yard line. That's the big tight end, Matt Vargas, making the catch. And Gall, if you're Shattern State here, I, I mean, you know, they had success on fourth down, but, man, this would be a they're gutsy gonna, one if the they punt. go for it. They well, do send on I mean, the punt If you go team. for it and miss it, Dixie State goes down and scores with two minutes left. You're only down by a touchdown, and maybe you get an yeah, outside you, kick. You've, you, just, you can't. You, you can't. have to kick it yeah, here and force them to go the length of the field. Not only that, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah, you have to kick this one here. The punt is away, end over end kick. Xavier Smith going to let it bounce, and it gets into the end zone. Dixie State will have an 80-yard field with 4.18 to go. Crazier things have happened. It, it's certainly not over. I mean, it's if you not, score, it's not if you score over. like we've seen this offense been able to score within a minute or a minute and 15 seconds, you know, obviously you can get a you can get an onside kick or you can force a turnover on the ensuing possession. If you score here, I mean. You know, it, it would be a long shot. It would be a, it would be a miracle finish, but certainly not out of the realm of possibility if you get a few things go your way. Good to see see Otami Haunga jogging jogging back out of the field with that offensive line. Taylor Alvarez is out there as well. They're both dinged up, one point or another in this game. 
Dixie State will show three receivers on first down and 10 from its own 20. Tanner Hammond. Play action. Pressure comes and he's going down. And if you're Dixie State, you just got to hustle back and get lined up. They'll lose at least five, call it seven yards on first down. They're just going to line it right back up. Same formation. Snap to Hammond. We'll dump it nearly, and it, oh my goodness gracious, incomplete. He tried to dump it to C.J. Luongo out of the backfield, and it was nearly tipped and taken in for a pick six. Yeah, and that, and that would have been a heck of a play by, by the Eagles' defense. Looks like, looks like that's called her for Sella, and that would have been a heck of a play if he was able to tip that one to himself and bring that one in on the interception. Well, third down and 17. Hammond, incomplete. Now it's fourth down, and you got to go for it here. Yeah, not, not sure I love that. I mean, obviously, it's four down territory, so I, I get the, you know, maybe trying to get seven or eight, nine, ten yards and, and see if you can get into a better spot to go for it on fourth down. That one just not executed very well. Dance the runs and in route, and the ball goes to the sideline, and, just a little bit maybe of a miscommunication or, or maybe just a bad ball. Who, who really knows on that one? Well, this is the game pretty much here. It's fourth and 17. He stayed trailing 40 to 27, 349 to go. Hammond will roll out to his left, fires to Powell. Powell makes the catch and is brought down short of the marker. And did the ball come out? Or are they going to say that he was down? Doesn't matter. It's going to be it's fourth down, it's either, be way, fourth down right. either way. It's going to be the ball there no matter what, if it's a fumble or if it's completed and, and, and kelt, you know, held to the I ground. I can guarantee the statisticians next door hope they just rule the catch and down. No, it, it, it was, they were down. It was forced, by the, was forced by the ground. Down. It was down. Either way, it's, uh, it's all moot at this point, as, as they say. 3.46 to go, Dixie State. Trailing 40 to 27. <laughs> the Eagles back out onto the field. Hand off to Miles, and he'll dive forward for four yards, second down and six. Miles, again, just up the middle. He's had a tremendous game. I mean, it, you know, if you're if you're shattering, it's going to be hard to pick, uh, you know, on their side a player of the game because you got obviously two great candidates in, in Tavon Wright, Elijah Miles. 37 attempts on 100 and 173 yards and a touchdown. I mean, 37 attempts for a running back at any level is is a lot of carries. He's really carried their offense at times so far into this one. And off the miles again on second down. He's still moving. He'll pick up six yards. The third down and two. 250 to go. Dixie State doesn't get the path does not get any easier. They got to play a, a Colorado Mesa team who probably scored when they were up 41-17 over Black Hill State at one point when we checked. Probably put up over 50 in that game. It'll be an inter interesting to see how Dixie State responds to this. Flags flying everywhere. Are they going to be offsides or is there going to be a false start? Oh, the defensive lineman jumped, but yeah. maybe that forced the false start. We'll get the call here from the referee. Snap, false start, number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. False start. Defensive, the offensive lineman. lineman have a hard job. I'm here to tell you. The defensive line can move around, can do whatever they want. And as soon as you 
And Twins. as soon as you, if you cough or if you hiccup yeah, on the, on the offensive yards. line, it's five yards. I mean, it's, it looked like the Dixie State defensive lineman came across. Came across. And the NFL, at least, I'm not sure if yeah. it's at the college level, if you if you come across the line and force an offensive lineman to, to move, jump, yeah, they then, it's, the, then the, it's offsides. Yep. Third down and eight. Here's Miles, and he's free. Ten ball came out, and Dixie State has got it. Or do they? Flags fly after, <laughs> after the play. But a Shadron State player is down and, and not moving, Trace. And this, and I don't know if he's just frustrated with himself for fumbling or, okay, now we see some movement. It's Miles. And it's Miles. But he wasn't, he didn't move. The Dixie, and there's no signal about who recovered the ball. There's three, there's, I count three flags on the field. Four flags on the field. There's one here kind of toward the near sideline at the right hash, and then there's three in a triangle over there on the far side between the six yard line and the ten and the fifteen it's yard like, line. It's like where's Waldo? Can you can you spot all the flags on the field? I don't know if we can get maybe another look at that play toward the end of it. I mean, there's no signal yet, so maybe if we can get another look at it, we can at least see who we think came up with the football. And what balls the out ball, there? Darius Nash forced the fumble there. I mean, Dixie State clearly Tariq recovered it. Tariq Wright's Wright's got it. got it. And he's he's. Oh, and he got. So he. On the field is a covered by Dixie State. It will be a Dixie State football. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number 23 of Dixie State. That penalty will be forced half the distance to the goal. This is number 23's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. First down. Samote Loco Tui picks up the penalty. I, all we saw was someone come crashing into the frame. So I, I was, the shot wasn't wide. It was a great shot. We could see exactly what happened, but the shot wasn't wide enough to see maybe what Loco Tui did there. Dixie State's got the ball back. There's hope. There was the turnover we needed, but it, was, it's, it comes needed about, about 15 minutes too minutes late. Ago. Yeah. 15 game minutes and, and 45 <laughs> yeah. real real time minutes. Well, even game minutes. Hammond <laughs> fires downfield. <laughs> it's incomplete. Shadron State coach on the on the far side had his first chance at a catch this season. He dropped it. Sports Center not top ten. Da, 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 da. Can we get a replay on that? <laughs> Did anybody get that? Let's watch it. You, you got it. Look at this. I mean, it's right in his hands. He dropped Maybe it. I hope that's, that's not. I hope that's not the receivers, coach. Hammond is going to scramble. He's got almost the first down, and then knocked out of bounds after a pickup of we'll call it eight. Third down and two. Yeah, stops the clock. Minute and a half left. <laughs> Hammond, are we going to look at it again, or is this job. okay? This is the. <laughs> this is, this the, is the scramble. This is the runs. Evades a would-be tackler there, Brendan Hopkins, not able to bring him down, and then of course. Travis Wilson forces him out of bounds, gain of eight yards on the play, third down and two. Third down and two, clock stopped at 132. Hammond, across the middle, pass caught by Dantzler. He's at the 30, 35, and then brought down to the 35, to the 36 yard line, forward progress, 124 to go. If you're Dixie State, you hustle back up to the line and say, listen. Never say never. Never say never. 122 to go. You've got one timeout still. You've got to snap this ball. Hammond loads up. Fires far side. Dantzler had it. Dropped it. Defender was there in coverage. Jeremiah Gutierrez. Yeah, he, Probably should have been caught still, though. And he and Gutierrez may have just gotten a hand on this one late just to knock it out. You know, Dantzler had his hand on it. You know, probably should have brought that one in like you mentioned, but Gutierrez may have just got a finger on it to knock it out of Dantzler's grip. 114 to go. Here's Hammond. Loads up. Near side. Allison makes the catch. And you got to get out of bounds. He's short of the first down. Or no, he's About right what? at the marker. 
half yard short. Sometimes you never can't tell because those officials all line up in different places. Half a yard short. Make it a full yard. Ah, he's making a full yard. Well, the PA announcer just said it was good for their first down, but third down and one. Hammond, incomplete. He thought Casey Allison was going to the sideline. Allison was cutting inside, incomplete. Fourth and one. Now we can finally say this is for the game. This is the game right here. This will, State can't this, will convert. this will officially put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> Barring another fumble, who knows? Barring a fumble on the snap uh, as they're taking the knee. Maybe <laughs> snap over his head. Hammond, pump fake, across the middle, tipped, incomplete. Jalen Powell is the intended receiver. Got his hands on it, but it was Knocked out of his hands and incomplete. That'll do it. Dixie State going to lose for the first time since September 7th. A six-game win streak comes to an end. A school record six-game win streak comes to an end. You know, you know eventually at some point winning streaks end. The important thing for this Dixie State football team is to say, okay, probably not going to win the conference now. Probably not going to the playoffs now. But listen, it's only our second loss. We can still go 9-2 and two this season, and they'll regroup. Yeah, it's, it's just, it feels, you know, just, you know, almost feels just like it did against CSU Pueblo. Week one, and, and now they'll have a chance to try to win Three more in a row. Yeah, you get a chance to start a new win streak, and and for me, that's it's what that's what's got to come down to is how do you respond to this game? I think, you know, you came in obviously a six-game win streak. You were feeling pretty good about uh, your season and the chances you had to uh, to make some make some hay in the R, in the armac of the season. But now you you have a little bit of a setback. You get humbled a little bit, but you know how do you respond to this game? Do you come back next week uh, hungrier and, and want to start a new win streak or or does this become the new norm for the Trailblazers? Hopefully they can uh, they can do the former and bounce back and come into next week's game prepared to uh, to go get another win. Dixie State will fall, should note. Trailblazers now 0-2 when wearing the all-red uniforms at home. Just just throwing it out there. Dixie State falls 40 to 27. And we'll fall to six and two overall, five and two in the Armac. Shadron State going to come in and play a bit of a spoiler, but this is a Shadron State football team that is very talented. We've said that repeatedly throughout the broadcast, and and I would not be shocked to see Shadron State finish with seven wins this year. And that would mean they'd have to beat Colorado School of Mines at some point. But we talked about how good this offense was coming in, and they are as good as advertised. And the state defense had its hand full, and then. This Shadron State defense that, you know, has been giving up 35 points a game came in and played the best game that they've played all season and, and shut down this potent Dixie State offense and, you know, is the perfect storm. Now the question is, you taste defeat again. Every once in a while, you kind of forget what it's like. You win six games in a row. That's a long time. That's a month and a half of this season that it's been a long time since you lost a game, and now you taste defeat. How will they respond to that? And that will be... You know, down up to the coaches and up to the players and how they're going to respond and say, listen, we've got three huge games. We've got Colorado Mesa at home, a rivalry game next week at home. You know, you're, you're going out of the RMAC. You're going, you're going to Division One. It's a Colorado Mesa school that was approached by the WAC just like Dixie State was, and they decided not to make the move. So you're going to have a Colorado Mesa team, you know, ready to prove something in every sport – they play Dixie State in this year. So you got Mesa at home next week. And then you go to Colorado School of Mines the week after. And then you go to, and then you come back to host Adams State. It's uh, a tough, tough loss, but there's still a lot to play for. And uh, we'll see how Dixie State responds to this loss. You, there's still the opportunity to come out. You've got six wins. You're six and two. If you can win two out of your last three, you can end your time in the RMAC and in Division II with the best season still you've ever had. 
in Division Two. There's still a ton to play for this year. Yeah, and you can't take anything for granted. Obviously, yeah, I think both of us, uh, you know, and maybe everyone, you know, fans throughout Dixie State, uh, you know, saw the record of, of Shadron State, see the record of Colorado uh, Mesa, and think, uh, you know, those are those, those should be two easy wins here at home. And quite the contrary, as we've seen today from Shadron State, Mesa obviously is always a tough opponent for the Trailblazers, regardless of record. They're going to be coming in wanting to spoil, uh, you know, the Trailblazers' final season in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Obviously, Shadron State came into this game, had a good game plan, executed uh, offensively and defensively throughout the entire day. And then, obviously, you got Carl School Mines in a couple of weeks that, that are playing, uh, you know, as one of the best teams in the country right now. And then, once again, Adam State, like you mentioned, to finish the season, another good offense another great offense in this Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference that you know if it's anything similar like we what we saw from Shadron State today uh, going to be another tough opponent so the Trailblazers have their work cut out for them there's no doubt about it it's going to be how do they respond and how do they salvage a good start to a season you're still six and two uh you know you can you can like I said you can go to eight and three and still consider it as a successful season your best in the Division Two era as you send off from Division Two and jump to Division One next uh next year you got a lot of play for still, but you got to be able to respond and bring it each and every week from here on out. Let's just keep it right here. We're not going to go in any breaks. We've got a volleyball game to get to at 6 o'clock. We're both going to be working up there and both have things to do in between now and then. So let's just stay right here. It's our Jimmy John's postgame report. I'm going to jump into it. We've got those final numbers, Trace, and we'll just uh, rattle through this pretty quickly. Uh, Dixie State outgained 442 to 360. Uh, overall, Trailblazers have a little bit better second half as they're able to, to punch the ball in the end zone a few times. But uh, really a slow first half hurting the Trailblazers in this one. And they fall 40-27. to 27. Uh, Individually, Dixie State can't quite get to that 100-yard uh, rusher. Sage Luongo, 8 carries, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Tanner Hammond finishes with 7 carries, 45 yards, and a score. Hammond goes 17 of 32, 240 yards and two touchdowns with one interception uh, in this game. Dwan Dantzler, his second consecutive 100-yard receiving game, seven catches, 119 yards, and a score. Uh, Jalen Powell, four catches, 35 yards as well. Sir Barnes will finish with a team-high 11 tackles for the Trailblazers. Uh, Dalton Holst for Chadron State, 19 to 34, 239 yards, four touchdowns. So no, no touchdown passes in the second half. They only scored the one touchdown in the second half. That was a touchdown run by Elijah Miles. It really was the nail in the coffin. Uh, Elijah Miles goes 39 yard, 39 carries, 183 yards, and a touchdown. He toted the ball 39 times in this game. He goes 103, 183 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, if you were going to name an overall player of the game, but no, let's listen. Tavon Wright, nine catches, 172 yards, two touchdowns. If you were going to name a player of the game, and I know we want to pick, you know, brought to you by SkyWest Airlines. I know we want to pick a Dixie State player, obviously, but it's tough in a game like this. So let's just say, you know, if you were going to pick a Shadron State player, how would you decide between Elijah Miles and Tavon Wright? I think I, I would decide it by who had the bigger impact um, on what I what I like to call momentum plays, and I think uh, that's got to get Wright. that one to Tavon Wright. I, I think he, you know, obviously Miles w was great throughout the game, and you can't shake a stick at, at anything he did today. I mean, oh, he was, he was fantastic. He was absolutely fantastic today. Uh, but Tavon Wright, to me, uh, you know, just when you thought the Trailblazers could uh, get off the field, Tavon Wright would run a, would run a great route, and Holtz would find him and, and create a big play or a touchdown or a, a huge gainer. I mean, he had a long. Uh, reception today of 62 yards and, and that was you know just one of those momentum plays where your defense is a third down you can get a stop and get off the field and then it's almost just a gut punch um, when you give up that third down conversion especially on a third down we saw a lot of third down and long situations that the Trailblazers were, were just not able to get off the field third down and 14 fourth down and eight third down and nine on, on, on a few different occasions and uh, Tavon Wright was really the biggest reason why the Trailblazers offense or excuse me the Trailblazers' defense were unable to get off the field as, as he was able to get into good spots on third downs and and just be a good receiver. And then, of course, made a lot of a lot of yards after catch. And, and to me, that's 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 who I would give it to if I was if I was giving it to a Shadow State player. That's who I would give it to just because of the uh, dynamicness, if that's a word, that uh, he he brought to the game today. Dynamicness. Where Google. Hey Google. Is that? No, I'm just kidding. I like it. I like it. Uh, and I, I agree 100% with everything you said there. Let's give it to a Dixie State player. 
Um, Sir Barnes was flying around defensively. He had 11 tackles today. Uh, did Dixie State finish? Dixie State did not have a single sack in this game. And, and you can tell that Shadron State game planned for that. It's a team that Trailblazers are leading the nation in sacks coming into today. And they will not be after this week with not getting any sacks today. But uh, Trailblazers, no sacks today. Um, Dewan Dancer, seven catches, 119 yards, and a score. He seemed like the most sure-handed receiver out there today. Did did he not, Jason? Yeah, I mean he he was he was the one that was making plays and, and getting open and and really was kind of just the the most reliable. Like you mentioned, um, you know, obviously going over 119 yards and, and had a touchdown there as well. Um, you know, you got, I mean, you got always to give a vote to Tanner Hammond, Tanner Hammond. coming yeah. in as the, as the third string quarterback and really was kind of a spark for, for this Trailblazer offense that was pretty lackluster to begin this game. Cody Wilson goes just two of 10, his, uh, certainly his worst start as a, as a collegiate athlete, two, 10, two for 10, uh, just nine yards, um, on the day. And, and like I said, Hammond came in in that first half and kind of just on that first drive, didn't score any points, but moved, moved the, the ball, football. had a couple of first downs, had a, had a couple of nice passes, ran the ball with his feet. Well, at times, uh, you know, he just provided the spark. I think the trailblazers needed not only that, he goes uh, 17 to 32 for 240 yards, two touchdowns does have the one interception, but he also gained 45 yards on the ground on seven attempts and then ran for that touchdown as well. So contributed three of the total touchdowns for Dixie state. And, uh, you know, I think maybe you give it to That's him fair. just because he's, yeah. he's, he's the spark that was provided from the bench. I like it. I like that. Let's go with Tanner Hammond and, and we can go, and we can go with Hammond and dancer. I think, uh, uh, dancer, you know, the senior out there doing his part as, as senior receiver, but Tanner Hammond, uh, and I, I really like that getting thrust into a game and, and making an immediate impact and, and without, you know, kind of bringing in that unknown and that, that dynamic, maybe Dixie state doesn't even get within 40 to 27. So Tanner Hammond, 17 to 32, 240 yards, two touchdowns, rushes for a touchdown as well, accounts for three touchdowns, uh, for Dixie state, the trailblazers fall in this one. There's your. Skywest Airlines players of the game, uh, Tanner Hammond, Dewan Dantzler, Honolulu Grill play of the game, Drayson. Now that's going to be a little bit uh, harder one. The Trailblazers, uh, maybe C.J. Luongo's 69-yard touchdown that's, run. That's got to be Dixie, it. Dixie State led for, let's see, how long did they lead in that game? They scored at the the 16, 16 seconds they scored in, and then 641, 641 later. Uh, you, know, you know, they led for – six minutes in this football game and then so I think, I think that's got to be it other than that your options are a 16 yard Dewan Dantzler pass um, you had Tanner Hammond 33 yard run I mean that was pretty good run as well Darwin but I think you got to go with with CJ Luongo 69 yard touchdown run to the house and uh, continue and he he gets close to 100 yards and, and and hopefully he'll be able to get up over 100 yards before his his career comes to an end here at Dixie State which believe it or not is is just in three games I mean he uh um I felt like it, it was just yesterday when he was a freshman throwing that halfback pass touchdown to beat New Mexico Highlands and Trailblazers will fall so let's go uh Hollywood Grill play of the game CJ Luongo 69 yard touchdown run and we have a Trevor Hill sighting his, his brother Ty is on this football team so in his homecoming so why not come back right Dixie State Athletics legend. You may not, you know, see a basketball player like him for a long, long time. Next week, Drayson, Colorado Mesa is in town. Should we pull up that final score and uh, and see what that final was between Colorado Mesa and Black Hills State? Because it doesn't get any easier. You, it, it's, you know, we talked about a Shadron State team that was struggling to finish games but still scoring a lot of points, and now they put a full game together three weeks in a row. So they're playing very, very well. Um, now you've got a, a Colorado Mesa team that's – the offense has come alive, 58-21 over Black Hill State. I mean, the Trailblazers – what was the Trailblazers' final against Black Hill State? 52-22, right? 52-22, so pretty similar score there. But you almost feel like – I mean, last week at, at – uh, Western Colorado Dixie State scores 28 and wins. They scored 27 in a loss today. Is this offense falling down a notch just a little bit at this point, or are they just playing better defenses? And I think that's what what's to be determined. And, and now Colorado Mesa, a team that can score with the best of them, will be in here next week 
uh, for a tough game next week. So certainly doesn't get any any easier. Any easier. The next three games you play are all against very good offenses. Even Adam State can score points in a hurry. So Dixie State will play Colorado Mesa next week, and that will be a 1 p.m. kick. We'll have pregame at 12:30 for you right here on uh, Radio Dixie 91.3 and, and CEC TV. One final thought, Drayson, before we wrap this thing up. You want to give a shameless plug about Trailblazer Weekly? Yeah, Trailblazer Weekly, our weekend, our, our weekly show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on right here on these same outlets other than the, the Stretch Internet portal, but CEC TV, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, as well as the Dixie State Athletics YouTube page. You can hear uh, everything from uh, wrapping up this football game to volleyball and everything else throughout the Dixie State Athletics universe here on campus every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Right here on Dixie State Athletics YouTube, CEC TV, and Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Well, and speaking of volleyball, huge matchup against Colorado Mesa tonight. Uh, you know, battling for that third place spot right now. And uh, if if the Trailblazers win that volleyball match, we could very well very well be taking a, a big chunk of Trailblazer Weekly to talk about the, the Trailblazer volleyball team and 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 their you know if they win tonight, it'll be a weekend sweep. So Trailblazers fall in this one, six game win streak is snapped, but the Trailblazers still 6-2 and two overall, 5-2 and two in the RMAC. They'll try to bounce back against rival Colorado Mesa next week here at Trailblazer Stadium. 12.30 pregame, 1 o'clock kick right here at these very same channels. Big shout-out to Nate back in the Radio Dixie 91.3 studio, and a big shout-out to CEC TV and, and the, the great crew that we have and the great students, the great staff uh, for all they do for us. We got to head up to volleyball and get set up up there for Drayson Ball, I'm Carrick Segmiller. Thanks for watching and listening. It was a tough one today, but the Trailblazers will bounce back. We'll be back next week with more Dixie State football. Have a great day.